Welcome to the EST Hangout. This is the EST Hangout, and today's guests are... A good Thursday morning to you. Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer here on Edmonton Sports Talk Live on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Tune in, iHeartRadio as well as those watching us on YouTube. Matt Awanek, Tom Gazzola with you here. Joining us today, Joaquin Gage from Two Guys and a Goalie. And Murray McCourt from the VIP Golf Show starting or returning, I should say, for Season 5. Six. 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 Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Just time flies. Uh, April 28th, live right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Also of the Ranch Golf and Country Club, which in this hour will have some breaking news when it comes <laughs> to the ranch. We will get to that in this hour. In the next 20, 30 minutes, we will get to Murray's breaking news uh, for I'll the spill ranch. It. I'm the new uh, social media influencer for the ranch. <laughs> well, you've been that in the I past. Have. Yeah. yeah, I like that. I'll do it again I, for I free this year. Uh, we will have our EST flyaway keyword for you just after 10 o'clock as well. Uh, before we get into the panicking of the Edmonton Oilers, just, just coming from TSN, the Oakland Athletics will play their next three seasons in Sacramento. Wow. wow. Before their full move to Las Vegas in 2028, they'll play at the Sutter Health Park. In Sacramento. I have um, been there. It's a triple A ballpark. Yeah. I uh, want to see how big it is. Bakersfield Condors played the Stockton Heat there in an outdoor game. It got rained out the one night. They played it the next day. It was a disaster. It was an okay ballpark, but not great. It's <laughs> it's it's like throwing a triple A or a major league team into a slightly upgraded Remax field. Yes. So, uh, it holds ten thousand six hundred and twenty four people. Yeah. Well, so it's a wow. better uh, baseball stadium than Arizona's playing hockey in the NHL. <laughs> oh, well, touche. Yeah. <laughs> touche. I, I, I'm going to say no. Really? 5,000 seat compared to a typical 20,000 seat stadium, whereas this is 10,000, where baseball stadiums could be 40,000, 50,000. Well, fair. So I think if you go by proportionally and stuff, maybe not as good. Amenity, well, at Oakland County Coliseum, Ricky Henderson Field, whatever they call it now. That's the demilitarized zone. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, it's not not a not a safe city. Have you made a sojourn out there? Well, no, I have I, actually been. I've I been have. to San Francisco a few times, but not to Oakland. Yeah, yeah, and you get off the train, like the the train train, not just subway, right across the street, and you're like, oh my god, like what happened around here? And then the ballpark. The, Remember on the backside of like the scoreboards and stuff, like there's holes in the aluminum siding and stuff. You're just like, this is not good. I'm sure it was great in 1968, but <laughs> not today. Oh, times change. They do. They do. And the the stands that they brought in for the football games, they just left in the corner of a parking lot. Really? Yeah. Not fenced oh. off or anything. Just sitting there. Wow. Sad. That's a that's a rough. I, I was there as a kid. And I still got family, some family. I think a couple of my family members are actually uh, gang members. Like nice. my <laughs> my one cousin, Sheldon, he's a gang member. I knew that because there was there was guns on the coffee table at one point. <laughs> oh, but, no, I think he was like a crip or a, or a blood at one point actually. So that's you, you don't know. Stuff. Yeah. you yeah. don't know which one because it's. I didn't uh, ask. Yeah, but I was younger at the time. But he was. Yeah, he was a. Uh, he was banging. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sorry, I'm just trying to fix her. We're very bright on the screen. Are we? That's okay. It's like, <laughs> I look don't at Mur think. But look at Murray's like, jacket. Well, I think you want to know what the jacket is. Well, you can't some... even see what color it is on the on oh. YouTube. Look at that. Oh, jeez. It Rep pops. That doesn't do it justice. Just, just, no, it doesn't so do it justice. justice. That'll, yeah, Representing some new Adidas clothing, you know. Gotta, very good. Nice. Got to represent. The, very Dallas uh, Stars of you, actually. Well, you know what? I thought that, that I was going to wear this today, and then I watched a bit of the hockey game last night, and I'm like, oh, I hope people aren't thinking that I'm a Dallas Stars fan or something. They might. But yeah, that you one. know that gang bang. Like, reminds me when I lived in San Diego, I went and spent a little bit of time here and there up in Los Angeles. Yep. And one time, me and my roommate at the time, his name was Jean Pierre Pru from uh, Quebec. We, a friend of ours that we went to school with, he was older than us. He had a Mercedes. He lent us his Mercedes to try, go up to Los Angeles for a couple of days, and we got so lost. We had no idea where we were trying to get back to where we were staying. And we pull into this area trying to get some directions. And somebody very nicely actually said to us, you need to get the F out of here. <laughs> they, they knew that we didn't belong yeah. and whatnot. And they said, well, why? We just need some help. And he said, no, get 
the F out of here because you guys aren't going to live very long if you stay here. Like, we were just in the wrong Yeesh. neighborhood. So we appreciated that they gave us that opportunity to get out of there <laughs> before something bad happened. But, yeah, it's a crazy world uh, in certain places for sure. I wonder what happened back in the day. Like, you know, you always hear the stories of the wrong turn off mm-hmm. the, uh, in L.A. and someone goes into Compton. Are they they're never seen again? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. before GPS. I mean, jeez. That's uh, that's scary. Like I think even my my brother in law they uh, they took the wrong turn and everything's like boarded. At, like there's bars on stores and everything. It does. It looks like a, a from a, the wire. A, um, yeah, it's, it looks like a militarized zone essentially. But he 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 made it out. It's okay. <laughs> what does he do now? Uh, he's uh, well, he's actually. So he's had some health issues, but uh, my my sister in law, she's a teacher, so nice. I'm doing all right. Um, one other thing, like around arenas and stuff, Newark, New Jersey Devils. Yeah. When that Prudential Center first opened, um, I think it was one of the first trips the Oilers made out there. So around 2008, 2009, Titch was on that. He was on the hangout the other day, but Titch was on the trip, and him and Joanne Ireland, they told the story where. Um, there was a parking garage right across the street and they were filing their stories and the team had been gone and things had, you know, people had left. And so they were going to go catch a cab. There's like a train station close by too, and a cab stand past the parking garage. So they get out of the building. They're looking and they're like, okay, we think we need to go through there to get to a cab stand. Cop pulls up with the, the lights on and goes, what are you guys doing? He's like, this is not safe. You run through the parking garage. On the other side, there's a cab stand. You hop in and you get out. And they're like, that was a little bit dramatic. And the guy's like, go. (laughs) And so they quickly, you know, walked or ran through the parking garage and then got to uh, the cab stand, hopped in. As they're getting through the parking garage, they were hearing gunshots from a couple (laughs) blocks away. It's a rough, rough neighborhood. Joe Lewis was like that too. And I, I, the same type of, thing happened to i think it was staffy and and uh kenny Lowe. they were walking back and um to the hotel there's that little underpass right outside of the old joe lewis and um the, the two guys started coming one from one side one from another Oof. and they were like and a cop came by and he just drove really slow and those guys Hmm. left and they said hey you gotta hurry up and get out of here this wow is yeah so joe lewis oh, has those boy. weird like it was tucked under the, yeah, the freeways and yeah, stuff yeah. like you're saying they, they tore it down that was a terrible arena a terrible arena oh my well, god so you might remember then uh la forum was it called back yeah. before the new yeah, L- okay so i lived down there in san diego back when the uh, cressy was playing for the kings and so that year that uh, they played the Oilers and the Kings played each other in the playoffs. I still have pictures of myself uh, at uh, the game and I, how my friends ended up finding out that I was at the game was I was on TV. They were uh, right beside where the Oilers came out. Uh, they scanned up the crowd there and there was me ah, on, the, <laughs> on the TV. But anyways, like that arena wow, right in the middle of the hood. Yeah. Like that was just Eesh. danger central and we Bought uh, tickets off of scalpers outside, and like we learned again after the fact that what were you doing carrying <laughs> around a bunch of cash and buying tickets off of scalpers out there because you could have ended up without your cash and not getting tickets in a, in a big hurry if uh, you met the wrong people. But the, yeah, that Joe Lewis, although the the one time was funny because they that's when they had a really good team and I, we just got smoked by the Red Wings one night and we, I'm standing outside the room and it's me Dan Cleary probably Horkoff Comrie and we're looking into the distance and we're all stunned because Anna Kornikova is, oh. is is standing there she's wearing a one piece leopard like tight outfit and she knows that we're looking and i swear to god she was in complete slow motion she must have done like 10 hair flips where it went like all her blonde (laughs) it was amazing how good looking she was and we were all standing there not like just like you know probably about 10 meters away and just staring and then mac t walks past us he goes boys let's go and we're like oh okay (laughs) but uh yeah she didn't want to have a look well i'm sure he had a glance over but uh he we we just got if we would have won Maybe he would have stopped for a 
for a little for a quick tat tat, tat but yeah. uh, no, we uh, we got smoked. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Oilers got smoked last night to those Dallas Hello. Stars. Yeah. So, are the Oilers a true contender? Who are you wow. asking? Yes. Well, yeah, what a question. Yes. Just go ahead. I'll, I'll mop this where did, up. Where, where do you guys all come out from last night? Because, like, there's a large portion of people right now that are upset that think this team, that shows that they're not good enough to go <laughs> actually be a contender and win the Stanley Cup this year. Um, that you can't be having those type of games this close to the playoffs. Uh, you know, big game now coming up tomorrow against the Colorado Avalanche, you know. And so, for the people, there's, there's concern with that. Uh, where do you guys come out? Colorado with this just game. gets smoked by Columbus. They we were did. just talking about that. They and did. Boy, teams can have bad games. It happens. They can have a bad game in the playoffs. You can. Yeah. As long as it's not game seven, it might not end your series. Well, my opinion before Gager jumps in then, yes, they're a contender if they have all guys going. I mean, Kane's not going. Nuge isn't going. McLeod's not going. Uh, I mean, you go on and on and on down the list of guys that haven't been playing well for a long period of time. They all need to find their game. If they all find their game and get on the same page, they can be a contender. But boy, it's going to be a it's going to be a hard road because they got some good clubs that they're going to have to face uh, to get there. But they they can do it. But I wouldn't hold my breath. Yeah, the the Oilers aren't as bad as that game last night, and the the Dallas Stars had a, a solid game throughout their entire lineup, and that's a that's a deep team. I think it's a good lesson to learn too, like what it's what it's going to take. Like there was, <laughs> they took way too many chances. The watching some of the, like I I had to rewind some, but what the the outnumbered chances back and forth, you can't. Dallas is a team you can't like uh, go blow for blow with you because they're too deep. They're mm-hmm. that's that's not how you can play. Even though the Oilers are an offensive team, you can't. You're going to lose against. Well, the we Dallas talked Stars. about the Stars yesterday, and they ain't going to win. Where's the hole of the Stars? Well, I said maybe their fourth line. I think at some point yesterday, their fourth line touched up the Oilers for seven points. So <laughs> not last night. Not there. <laughs> yeah. I said goaltending just because Ottinger hasn't been yeah. there this year. But we know he could be there, and last night he was great. Um, that's a very good hockey team, mm-hmm. top to bottom. Like honestly, where is their hole? If you could see one, uh, there's, there's not. They don't have too many holes. The only hole is a structured, patient game against them, where it starts getting a little bit tighter. Um, and they're, they like to take chances. I think that's where the their their inefficiencies in their game. They're. They're anxious to get going. I think they're the way that they forecheck and constantly come at you. Um, your D have to be able to move the puck and perform under pressure. That's where you're going to gain some chances and be able to counterattack a little bit. And you, you can't be passing the puck through the middle, hoping for you know, hoping for an eighty foot. Oh, that's foot not pass. good. That's, geez, <laughs> Shoot, like you're not from supposed your, to do that. Yeah, from your weird. veteran guys, you know, that's the, the way that the Oilers go is the way that they play, and that wasn't. Uh, what was unfortunate too, I, I felt for Pickard because I really thought he was going save for save with with uh, with Ottinger last night at the after the first period. I was like, that's cool. Like this is going to be a this is going to be a big confidence boost if if something does happen. At least he has you know this uh, this kind of experience in the in the Rolodex to to draw upon. But now not so much. He did beat them on February 17th in Dallas. And that was a game where the Oilers were patient, structured, yeah. uh, emotionally in check. I don't know, like that Darnell Nurse 10 minute, maybe that guy got guys off their game too. Like Darnell, I talked about it on the post game show yesterday. He's supposed to be like an emotional leader on the team. He's been around for so long. That has an effect on other guys. Like if he's going unhinged and, you know, gets a 10 minute, in theory, the rest of the team should be able to to manage and be and not let it bother them. But it just seemed like that's when the wheel started to get a little bit wobbly, and then finally, eventually, fell off in the second period where they had that spurt where it goals two, three, four uh, finally went in, and you're like, oh, game over. Like I thought, even after the second goal, maybe the Oilers they had a couple of good shifts really quickly after that, and then they got Dallas got that third one, and I'm like, this is over, no chance now. Yeah, I agree. That was deflating, I think, for the team, yeah. what Dar- Darnell did there and take 
you know, whatever your number two defenseman off the ice for 12 minutes is probably not yeah. ideal against a, a top team like that. But I might say uh, with Dallas' uh, experience of being there, I mean, they've had some runs, but not recently. And with this roster, playoff hockey is a different beast, mm-hmm. and they haven't had some playoff success ex- like recently with a, a big run. So I might say that's their their weakness. Does it, could it be something they overcome and, and win a Stanley Cup this year? Sure. But uh, but that would be my knock on their team is uh, they gotta they gotta prove it still. That's my knock on the Canucks too. Yeah, going into the playoffs, like first round is the big one to me yeah. in, in a large way. Um, but yeah, and then for the Oilers, like here here's where I go with, and I don't, I'm not in panic mode. I don't care about the rest of the season. Just in general, I just don't. You didn't <laughs> care about the I season but then before it, game one, because and, and and then they got into that bad start, right. and all of a sudden I, that had to be thrown out the window a little bit. But at the start of the year, I didn't care about the regular season because they're going to be in the playoffs. And then they had that <laughs> terrible start last in the league. And now you got worried about the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But then they got back into a spot about they're in a playoff spot. They're going to make the playoffs. There's no fear of them missing the playoffs. All right. So the rest of the season, who cares? Mm-hmm. And honestly, who cares? It doesn't. If Evander Kane and Nugent Hopkins don't score a goal the rest of this regular season, I don't care. It doesn't matter because what do they do in the playoffs? Yeah. That's how this season's all going to be judged is what happens in the playoffs. Last year, I just quickly looked up the record. They were 18-2-1 going to the playoffs. They went on the way. They were playing the best hockey. They were playing brilliant hockey. They were playing defensive hockey. Yeah. Didn't go win them the Stanley Cup. The playoffs are a brand new beast. It yeah. doesn't matter necessarily always what you're doing just before. Once game one of your first round playoff series begins, it's brand new. It's all yeah. different. Everything changes. Yeah. All the stats are back to zero. Everything's different. And that's where I'll judge this hockey team this season. So, yeah, you yeah. could maybe try to look at and project, like, well, they're not playing well enough right now, and that's going to bother them. But last year they were playing well mm. enough, and it didn't work. It doesn't always fully translate. So I will judge Evander Kane. I will judge the rest of the team. McLeod, I will judge this team overall and be worried about that when I watch them in the playoffs. I don't care about the regular season. The regular season doesn't matter now. I'll be stunned if Evander Kane isn't Evander Kane come game one of playoffs. I'll be stunned if he's if he's not. Yeah. I loved when playoffs started. My numbers never look so good. You know, I just felt those looked really good after that. And it's good for people like they... <laughs> You know, if you haven't had a great season, I've said this before, like that that kind of reset button, you know, everything starts anew. There's Mm -hmm. what you did over the last 82 games really doesn't matter anymore. You know, if you're what matters is is uh, is now going through the playoffs and having success. So it's a long grind. And I'm sure that. A lot of these guys are looking ahead slightly. I know they say stay in the moment and stuff, but at this point, I think uh, Vancouver's finishing first in the Pacific isn't uh, isn't possible for the Oilers at this point. I don't think that's that's yeah, going yes. to happen. Well, the, the benefit would be like so. The Oilers have two games in hand. I think they're seven five back. back. Is it seven? Yeah. yeah. So you win your two yeah, games in tough. hand, though, that makes it three back. Same amount of games left. You play the Canucks once. You win that hockey game. You're talking about one point. So it's still, to me, the, the math is still showing there. The Oilers, though, have to, like, the games in hand only are yeah. important if you win them, right? Yeah. Like, you got to go still win those games, which I'm assuming Colorado would be one of those games in hand type thing. Um, I didn't look the Canucks schedule. And you have to beat the Canucks, which you haven't done this season, but that wasn't, you played them at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So it's, there's still that chance there because you have that head to head. You're not going to be quote unquote four point game. Yeah, and you're not going to be perfect in the playoffs. And you know, tomorrow night's going to be a good test mm-hmm. to bounce back. you know Do they bounce because back or not? Right. yeah, really, really lay an egg down in Big D, and then how are you going to respond against a really, mm-hmm. really good, fast um, Avalanche team? I'm I'm looking forward to it. I I, I want to see a good response. Couple of comments in the nasty chat. Uh, Big Uke, I'm okay with a couple bare butt spankings before the playoffs. Gives them a good head shake. A mental reset before games mean a lot more. Jody, so by early May, the Oilers are out. What then? And to me, well, they're out. Then we judge based on the playoffs. Yeah. And we figure out from yeah. why, why are they out? Yeah. Why are they out in the playoffs? What was the reason for them being out? Post-mortem. We will look at that one. Yep. Um, and Joel, it's like he's putting his fingers in his ears for the whole season. Goes, la, 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 in to- <laughs> terms of talking to me. But la- yes, I'm fine with that because it, like, this doesn't matter anymore to me. If you The, the regular season... The number one goal is to get to the playoffs. Once you're in the playoffs, the regular season now doesn't matter. It's, 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 it's that first round matchup you're playing. You're playing them a best of seven. You don't see any other teams. It's just that team. And then if you win that one, it's the next team. And it's only about getting to that 16 wins. And it's a 
there's the three seasons hockey preseason, which absolutely doesn't matter for anyone else but coaches um, and bubble players. The regular season to get to the playoffs and the playoffs to go in the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm fingers in my ears. Wow. This is what the Leafs were kind of like the last couple of years. Like not this year, last year it was okay. We'll get us to Leafs and. Bruins or Lightning in the first round. We all knew that was coming as of mm-hmm. yeah. November. And it was like, get us there because that's that's how it's going to be played. And that's when you're, the Leafs are going to be judged. Leafs had a good season last year in the regular season. They won their playoff round. Was it a great season, though, in the end for them? No, because yeah, they lost because the they round. won a playoff yeah, round. But <laughs> they had a great regular season, but they didn't get it done in the playoffs. The playoffs right. is the part that matters. It is. If the, Oilers, if the Oilers lose every game the rest of the season almost, or let's say they go two wins the rest of the season, whatever it is, but they go win the Stanley Cup. Does it matter? No one will remember it. That's exactly. No, exactly. We're not going to yeah. remember this Dallas Stars and, game if the Oilers go on right, a great run in the playoffs. Because if, if honestly, if the Oilers lose in the second round, are we going to come back? Like, you remember that Dallas game when yeah. they lost five nothing in the regular season? Exactly. No, we're going to be talking about the playoff games. And listen, there's That's no more in the playoff time. There's no more games against Arizona. There's no more games yeah. against San Jose. There's no more games against Anaheim. I mean, your likely path to the Stanley Cup is Vegas, then Vancouver, then. Whoever Colorado, wins between Winnipeg, Dallas Nashville, or Colorado Dallas, yeah. or whatever, yeah. and you know Winni- Winnipeg P- maybe in there. Yeah, somehow. It's gonna be a tough, might be Nashville I mean, that's second a round. Tough, yeah. Who does tough who does matches? Dallas match up against right now? Is it is it? It would be the uh, L.A. Kings, Kings as of yesterday, yeah. I believe it was. And one. then so the the Preds get the Canucks. Oh wow! We get that. We, I don't know if we've ever really had this with the wild card situation where the two division guys actually just swap. Yeah, that's weird. I think it's always worked out really well. Those are some unique matchups, though. I like it. And that's I think the Canucks would have to be worried about the Predators. I remember the last, uh, I hate to say it, but that last series when the Canucks did play the Predators in the, I, it, was it the conference final? Could have been. And Kessler was unbelievable. He won that series for the Canucks that year. He was he was just a beast. They didn't, he, they couldn't obviously get it done at the end, but... Um, yeah, it's that, that I I like that series. It's kind of, you know, two top heavy first lines. It'll depend on Yossi and and Quinn Hughes. Um goal that goaltending Demko matchup versus Saros. Yeah, that's yeah. that's, that's awesome. Uh-huh. That's a it's a awesome awesome. They're all going to be so good. I I mean, as of today, uh, Canucks take on the Preds, Oilers take on the Golden Knights. Dallas gets the Kings, Colorado gets Winnipeg. Oof, that's that's as of today. By the yeah. way, Ooh. the Nashville Predators have lost their last three games after yeah. that big stretch. If you go Ooh. out east, as of right now, the Rangers get the Capitals, the Bruins get the Lightning, Ooh. Panthers, Leafs, Hurricanes, Flyers. Panthers, Leafs. Panthers, Leafs. Panthers, 2-7-1 in their last 10. Yeah. Things oh. are reeling for them. Well, Philadelphia is right in trouble. Remember, you gave me heck a, a couple times ago on the hangout. I said, I really don't like the uh, uh, Florida's team. And you're like, oh, they're the best team in the league right now. And I don't I don't like their team that much. They should. They should. But should yeah, not be not. stumbling and bumbling they the way they are now. Sure like Carolina a lot better than Florida for sure. But explain so, yeah. Nashville to me. Nashville was a seller at the trade deadline. It was the last time a seller at the trade deadline went on a crazy run and made the playoffs. That's they almost did it last year too. Yeah, they, yeah. when they had made all those trades, and they had a late surge right after the deadline when they yeah, got like, rid of Echo yeah, Brown and Mary, Echo, and, and then yeah. it, it was like for two weeks, and then they fell apart. This year, no, they just stayed. It's, we're going to beat everybody. Chip, there's a chip on your shoulder when the you know the team takes a certain direction, and you're like, well. You know we're we're a good team here, and I think there's that's a little bit of it. I think there's a lot of underrated that Forsberg man. He's one of the he's got like that Barkov syndrome. I think where he's a phenomenal hockey player. Mm-hmm. Like he's he is a superstar. What he what he can bring. Like I, what was it the last game? I think Skinner must have stopped him like eight times. He was and all they, over it. And it was game. like he should have had like a hat trick that night. But and what was Washington doing thinking about trading him to <laughs> no. Nashville a few years ago? What is back wrong with Martin Erat? Yeah, it was Erat. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, no. That was them well, chasing that cup for Ovi. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of chip on their shoulder, how about the chip on the shoulder of the New Jersey Devils last night off the hop against the Rangers? That was great. Unbelievable. I, uh, that you could see it like the discussions before. Um, I've 
Pete Laviolette like yelling. Oh man, that's uh, that's such a throwback. I love the fact that and uh, Gazdek brought it up this morning that you know you see the other how the other person's lining up the the coach and he responds with his guys and just says let's uh, let's get after well, it. Here. I think we all knew that the one fight was going to happen, but did you think that five fights were going to happen? I didn't that's think great. that was going to happen. I mean, I, absolutely, I'm with you. I think it's great, but you said you didn't enjoy that. I, I, I'm a person that I'm. And it's been known from now time at 1260 to hear, I'm good with fighting not in my hockey anymore. I, I'm good getting rid of it. I'm good not having it. The the stage fight especially I don't need. If I want to watch fighting, I'll go watch boxing. I'll go watch UFC. I don't need it in my hockey. And wow. for me, it's like I see, like, we're, we're seeing Chris Simon stories. It's those things that have come in over the sure. years that I sit there and I go, I, I don't need this in hockey. I understand, though, and I'm not trying to, like, I understand that you guys love that and that crowd loved it yeah, i get absolutely. that and i'm not gonna sit here and say shame on you for that or anything like that for me personally i'm good without it i didn't watch it I, it was on twitter Ooh. every time i just scrolled past it when i'm at a hockey game and a fight breaks out i immediately look at my phone i get off it i don't need it <laughs> personally that's just that's well, where i am with it um but right. yeah now i'm gonna get ripped. so gauger then i'm curious your opinion as a former nhl player okay so new jersey season's done big chip on their shoulder the rangers have roughed them up all year long rempy you know did what he did a couple of games ago against him and who what, he's been kicked out all three times against yeah, just, yeah. can i read his stat line okay, I was thinking, I, may i indulge everybody yeah. matt rempy versus the new jersey devils this season three games played 503 time on ice total 47 penalty minutes three ejections yeah. perfect <laughs> so but my my point is i to me i view that as a team building thing for the New Jersey Devils. They're they're looking towards next year. New, New Jersey did not meet their expectations at all this year, and that's them bonding as a team. Going, you know what? We're making a statement for next year, and you are not going to push us around next year like you did this year. We're going to be back and just be ready for us. Here we are. Yeah, no, you you have to stick up to stick up for yourself against a bully, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes when you punch the bully in the mouth, that uh, you get you gain that respect back. Um, to Maddie's point, I, I understand not wanting fighting, but I think it's still part of the game with hockey. Um, mm-hmm. There's and I, I guess the stage fight like that. Once in, I can see there's a reason why that happened. That sure. wasn't just. Um, for the hell of it. That was because of the things that had uh, led up transpired to previous games. previously, and that was the boiling point. Now it's settled. Absolutely. Right? So now yeah. it's done. Um, instead of, you know, the hacks and wax and slashes, I, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the spontaneous, like, organic fight where two guys have been battling against each other forever. I look at, well, just for, you know, historical sake when when Le Cavalier fought Aginla. Yeah. You know, those were two just mm-hmm. beasts and it just got to a point where we gotta we gotta do something here. Right. And that those types of uh altercations are are meaningful in a sense when when you see you arguably your your best players, uh, it just brings everyone else into it. And it calms things down. Yeah it to, does. in a, in it a sense. Does. And it you know, I, I'm not a fan of the instigator rule. Um, I think I don't think you need it when you watch something uh, possibly afterwards after the game. Then you say, okay, he had intent to go after someone and do that. Maybe it can be because I, I a still, post punishment. A post, yeah, uh, not during F1, the game. Going to the Stewarts after the race. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of like that, right? I don't, I don't like I, because in certain instances during a game if someone's acting like a moron they need to they need to like who's the cousins in Mm -hmm. florida he he should have answered for something that he did way before but people are scared because of that instigator rule yeah Uh, i think it was when they did the players poll with nick cousins uh it was he won like 60 something percent of the vote of which player in the league would you like to punch in the face most it was Nick Cousins. But who grabbed He's replaced him? Avery then. Yeah. Who who grabbed like it, it got to a point where someone actually someone grabbed, grabbed him, and, him and he turtled. Yeah. But he stopped. That was it, right? Like it 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 ended. That guy got ejected, which I don't agree with. Yeah. Whatever. Well, to the safety part of it and whatnot, as you alluded to, like Rempy is fighting a ton, but that guy is uh, he's getting 
pummeled sometimes. He's taken some big, big, big shots. His fights are long, yeah. and some big, hard shots are being received. I'm not sure how many he's landing, but my God, he's he, if he keeps taking the shots he is, he's going to have some problems. Cass has talked about that in two guys, yep. with you guys. That about like in those early fights that it's oh. it's great that he for like some people that like what he's doing and stuff but he's gonna have to really watch it because it's not <sighs> technically he needs to be a little better. I asked <laughs> Cass about that on the uh, post game show one day and uh, he Cass is like I love what he's doing but I'm watching his fight and the technical things that he's not doing yeah. opens him up to getting two black eyes at a time yeah. and taking a lot of punishment and abuse he's like he's gonna have to refine his style and he's like the experienced guys are gonna have their way with him he was good against delorier he had that really good fight against delorier but uh what's his name in uh uh columbus got him really good uh nick olivier i think it is and uh yeah he's like he's willing Mm -hmm. obviously but uh cass cass is like yeah if i fought him i would do this this and this and he would have no chance there's probably some good uh training facilities in new york that he could frequent to, <laughs> to learn learn a few things i think well, or just go to upstairs in madison square garden and watch a couple yeah, yeah. probably <laughs> learn something from there well but, he's uh, an alberta boy so if he's coming back to alberta maybe maybe champs. cass can uh <laughs> or jelena maybe you can go hang out with jelena <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, get a few tips and at least hanging on figuring right. out how to latch on a guy so he doesn't take so many bombs man <laughs> Oh. Uh, Mike Smith in the nasty chat uh, to me saying, yes, they will be judged based on playoff performance. However, there's a statistical edge in having home ice advantage. Um, I'm not, I'm, I won't disagree with not wanting home ice advantage, stuff, but you and I are on the same side of this, hmm. which is, would you rather start on the road or start at home in a playoff series? Depends on against who. What but is that? Oh, like if you're playing Vegas, I, you probably want to start at home. Yeah. Because of how much that can have an effect on the game. I like starting on the road in the sense that, like, the home team, I feel, has that, especially if you're, like, like Oilers taking on Kings. I think that would be one. That would be one where it's one. They've got all this pressure. That you can't. They always say the saying, team that loses the home game first, that you lose the series type thing. The pressure's all on the Kings there. you got to win your first two games. Otherwise, you're coming back to Edmonton. And New Orleans, you go there and you just need one. You need it, whether game one, game two, it doesn't matter. You're the road team. You could lose also, honestly, both because you're still coming back home. So mentally, I think it's way more crushing. You go somewhere to start. You take the first game, knowing you're coming back home for three and four. Now the games have to be sep- changed in a way. Yeah. But when you get back to game three, one seven. series. All of a sudden it's a three, one series. Game seven, you want it at home. Though. Yeah. Sure. And that's where yeah. like it would have to play it out where it'd be like a. I think yeah. Two, I, three, one, one. I oh, well, I'd I'd love the choice of the higher seeding team, and then they can choose whether to start at home or on the road. Hmm. It's I guess it'd be hard with scheduling logistics of, yeah. of arenas, right? But I think yeah. that would be great. Then you'd I think you could go like two, two, three, one, one. Two, two, yeah, two, three, one. Yeah, I guess uh, that's what it'd hmm. have to be. Yeah. Would come the home other, for three. Would the other team want to come go on the road for three? Even yeah. better. That's the thing. Well, you go on the road and you just guess, take the yeah. one, and you're coming home for three now. Yeah. I kind of mm. like the danger of two, two, one, one, one. It's almost like you're rolling the dice, right? And I kind of like that edge to the playoffs, where it's like, well, they're going to be on the road. It's going to be tough. It just, it just adds to the. The fever of it all. So I don't know. The two three one one, I always found found that frustrating in whatever league was employing it for whatever reason. I liked it. I I mean, it, it, in junior you get to the west the, the the finals. Then it because of travel. Yeah, they would do it. Yeah, I remember the um, Oil Kings did it. Yeah. Wasn't it two at home, then three on the road, then two back at home? Isn't that the way they would do it though? Yeah, yeah. That's because right. that's because it's usually because those the home team would still start at home, so it'd be right. two three two. Two, this three, two, is sorry. the home team or the the team that has home ice advantage is taking the second right. series. Now so it would have to be different. Would it be two three one one. Right. In, but it generally yeah, it's two three two. Right. The NBA I think used to do that. I think in the finals. baseball still does that. Um, I believe because of just logistics, yeah. you can't do the two three two two one one one. It's just flying back and forth. I think yeah, they the do two three two. Issues, yeah. It was weird in uh in the in the finals when we were playing Swift Current, it would have been three three one. Oh. But um, I think it was because they said it was. Uh, yeah, but if if we like, I think we did we start at home. 
No, we we started there. We started there, I think. And if we, if if Swift Current would have won the first two, then we would have came back. But because or is that how it worked? Somehow it worked where you couldn't have three games at home if you won the first two. I think if you won the first two, then it was going oh. back the other way. If hmm. you split it, then you had three, three, one. So, Interesting. Yeah. This is the EST Hangle presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer, Matawanic, Joaquin Gage, Murray McCourt, Tom Gazzola with you here. We're a little late behind to getting to this, uh, but it is Hangout Headlines brought to you by, this is worked so perfect today, the Ranch Golf and Country Club offering premier conditions, top-notch service, unmatched value. The Ranch Golf and Country Club would be the best choice for your first round of the season. My note mm-hmm. says opening soon. Book tee times by visiting therangegolf.com, but opening soon... Um, I don't have to, after soon, in a couple minutes, I won't have to say opening soon, um, because we've got a big announcement when it comes to the ranch. Yes, the big decision was made. I met with our superintendent yesterday, and we contemplated actually opening two days ago. Ooh. We contemplated opening on Sunday, but the final decision is we're opening on Tuesday. So Tuesday, April 9th is opening day. Bam, bam, bam. So, uh... T-sheets are going to open tomorrow, Friday, at noon. And I can tell you from past experience, the first day or two that we open, they sell out in seconds. <laughs> so so don't pick up the phone and phone the ranch because we have nine lines, but you're going to be on hold. By the time you, someone gets through you're through someone, everyone online is going to book the tee times. Right. So go online, www.theranchgolf.com. And book online is going to be the the best way that you're going to be able to get in as fast as as possible. But uh, Tuesday, April 9th, I'm excited. It's game time. Let's go. April 9th. Tomorrow at noon is when you can book your tee times, and you could golf. The Tuesday, that's two days before Masters begins. Perfect. It is. You get a golf Perfect. before the Masters. Usually we wait till after this year. We get to do it before. Get your rounds. You can here's here's for next weekend. Go get a morning round in, then go to the 19th. Go up into the clubhouse, grab a nice drink, and watch the Masters. Oh, what a good, good, good program! Overlooking at the like. ranch, you know, on the patio, looking at the you could if you plan it right, you're one in ten. Otherwise, you're inside. You're just 10, looking yeah. out uh, into the beautiful course, and what a what a way to watch the Masters! I love Get it. Get around in, and then watch it, and have a bite. Murray will be having a red. Well, maybe, hello not, to everybody. maybe not that early. Come <laughs> on, Murray. Uh, okay. Well, Live if you if you're there, if you're if there, I'm there, okay, okay, okay. but. Uh, can I ask, so instead of opening up a couple days ago, instead of opening up this weekend, giving it until Tuesday, what were the, some of the advantages to that? Well, ultimately, uh, the biggest reason is we want to ensure that the golfers get, well, we promote, I mean, premier conditions. We're well known to always be one of the best conditioned golf courses around, and we wanted to ensure right from the moment that people come out and play that they're going to be able to get the pro- a product that we're proud of mm. giving them. And if we would have opened, you know, Tuesday was whatever it was, 20, 21 degrees. Everyone would have loved to golf, but, you know, the course wasn't quite yet at the point where we would be proud to say, hey, come and play play here. And, uh, you know, a couple of the greens that are in the shaded areas, 11, 17 in particular, they're still pretty wet. And mm-hmm. we did do a big, thick layer of top dressing on the greens at the end of last year. So the bunch sand so we're having need them to dry out a little bit to get the sand off of those and could we have opened them open sure but again we want to make sure that everyone is going to walk off the golf course and go wow the ranch has premier spring conditions and and uh, we didn't really feel that would be uh, 100 percent possible till tuesday right i totally get that and respect it actually obviously the other thing I would ask is, you guys did some uh, changes to the course a couple. Of, was it last year or two years ago? La- well, we have. It was a process on, uh, ongoing for a while. Last year we did renovations to four different holes. Right. Yeah. So. How have those taken? How have they wintered? And then is there still going to be some construction or any renos happening this right. golf so, season? Right. So, so our superintendent has now seen 100 percent of the golf course, and he is ecstatic. The conditions of the golf course are pr- pretty much flawless now. 
It is still a spring in uh, in Edmonton, so if we do get some crazy cold temperatures, the poa can can recede and things like that. So we're not completely out of the woods of, mm-hmm. of what can happen with grass in, in the Edmonton area. But as of this moment, the golf course looks pretty much flawless. So uh, so that's spectacular. Last year, we actually had three greens that were a little rough uh, coming into the spring. They weren't they weren't horrendous, but they weren't uh, you know as good as we wanted them to be. But uh, we we don't have that. Uh, issue right now in terms of the renovations we were fully open on everything last year by middle of the year the way we sodded those all that mounding or sorry seeded all that mounding we we seeded it with an annual ryegrass just to get it thicker and get it growing faster Mm -hmm. that was an annual ryegrass so that's not going to grow back so this year it's going to look way better and look the way we want it to look because it's just going to be fescue uh, okay. Uh, kind of a wispier fescue and so that's all well and good now in terms of Finishing the renovations or what? any more renovations, uh, we did not finish the 15th hole completely last year. We do have a little bit of work to finish on that uh, that hole this year. Some of it's already been done. Uh, there's one tree left on the right-hand side of the hole up by the green. Uh, if you remember that, there's one tree that kind of stood alone a little yeah. closer to the fairway. Yeah. That's the only tree that's there. Uh, that's a big old one? Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a really nice-looking tree. But yeah. all the other trees there are gone already. Uh, so some shaping and some work has to be done in there. And then at the front of the green, if you remember, we played last year until the new green opened on the front part of the old green. So yes. when the new green opened, there was that big slope yes. going up to the green. Well, that's not the oh, way we okay. wanted the Is that the one with the, the big tractor? The Yes. Okay, yes. that's the big dog leg right. Right, right? exactly. So that, so that big old tree, is that... Stupid tree still there, right oh, off the, the tee box. The oh yeah, that tree still there. <laughs> you gotta get rid of that thing. I, I hit it know. every every that's, single. I will. That's time. Taking a saw to I hate that Are you tree. a lefty? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you're yeah. lefty with a slice. Learn to hit it straighter. Power of the <laughs> It doesn't matter, Murray. I, don't, it. I, I no. can get to a hit point it. where I'm hitting it straight in my golf year. I, I will get to that hole. I will aim it wherever, and it, my ball's always just going to be right to that tree. Yeah. I yeah. never have a problem with that. That's, I don't know. Because yeah, you're righty. Yeah, exactly. I know. Hey. You've, and it, that green's now elevated, right, when you it, come around there. That's is, nice. Yeah. That's, and that little sewage pond, that, that a lot of my balls I are love that No hole. problem. It's a great hole. What's I it's, love that hole after the tee. It's just a tree. <laughs> Once true, I, yeah. If I could get it in the fairway or if you could cut it a little bit, I know sometimes, especially when, before the fescue really grows in, yeah. what you, do you could hit cut it on the that? hill. What do you hit there? A driver and I cut it around the corner. Jesus. A I'm a prick. golf pro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I'm so a, just to finish Mr. I won't hit the tree. Yeah. <laughs> I'm no, a five iron. The tree. But, <laughs> so the front... I'm going to throw it as far as I can. So the old green that we were using last year that was still there... Yeah. Uh, Okay, so April 17th, they're coming in to, to finish this work. It'll be closed. We'll be using our 19th hole for 7 to 10 days is what the plan will be. And so that is all going to be a very soft hill mound going up to the to the green. So we'll kind of finish that off maybe 30 yards back, 40 yards back. So if you come short, it'll still catch in It'll there stay there. Okay. Yeah, it's not okay. going to roll back down on that old green because that old green is not going to be there anymore. Okay. A- anymore. So it'll get finished properly. Uh, it'll be closed for, like I said, 7 to 10 days. It'll be sawed in there and then it'll be open and then the renovation will be done. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so that hole just going to be spectacular. There's a couple of tee boxes too that we're going to flatten the uh, when he's in doing that work as well. Uh, the gold tee on 16 is going to get leveled, and the gold tee on uh, the par 4 14, that's going to get uh, leveled and flattened a little bit bigger as, as well. So just going to do those subtle little changes. And then we bought 82 brand new power carts, uh, easy go power carts, same power carts as Jasper Park Lodge, Banff Springs. So Damn. it's good enough for them, or, uh, uh, and Kananaska. So if it's good enough for them, good enough for, good enough for us. And uh, we got the fancy new GPS system that comes with it. And so it's a better, fancier GPS system than we had before as well. So that's a nice perk. The, the carts, uh, Bluetooth to your phone, yes. so with speakers in it. Music, so baby. You just really? pump your music through really the speakers like that. on the carts. Uh, it's yeah, great. It's, it's what about drone beverage delivery service? We, how, where are we on that? <laughs> we got two new beverage carts. 
that, you know, everyone always loved the beverage carts. Be, well, I don't know if they loved it, but you could always hear them you coming. You always excited about the beverage oh, cart. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you could hear it coming from two holes away. And you know good's those, coming. Those, yeah. those big gators yeah. uh, that we had, we we have, uh, the, one of those are still remains as a, as a third beer cart as a backup. But we got two brand new uh, beer carts. They're absolute tanks, but they have double electric battery uh, packs in them. So they're electric carts that uh, you're not going to hear them. Nice. And they fly. They go fast. So you're, the beer cart girl is going to get around to you real nice. quick, well, th- but you're not going to hear it coming. I so. thought uh, course influencer new beer cart boy Tommy Gazzola is going to be driving that thing around the course. Yeah, no? I don't have my oh. short course. On, on, <laughs> we, on ladies' night. We were looking yeah. for uh, yeah. a new content for us. Beer cart boy? I'd spend a day with I'll the following Tommy. I'll do beer cart boy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all the tips I'm going to get from ladies' night. Oh, look yeah. Up. yeah. Not so much men's league. Uh, that would probably get yeah. mocked and ridiculed and go home crying, but <laughs> it's worth a shot. If it's for, if it's for at the gram and uh, gets us a few clicks, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. we When I was at... Uh, well, at the ranch, we did have a, a male on the beverage cart for Ladies League a few years back, and I know he did pretty darn well. He was no Tommy G, but... Uh, Get me out there, You might actually know him. He's a bartender at uh, Kelly's Pub, Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Scott was doing Scott it? Was I know, the, he does Scott. know him. Yeah. What he, was Scott doing beer cart for? Oh, well, he was a beer. He was working on the beer cart. You must ranch. have given him some golf because he's well, a huge golfer. His I don't know if it's still his gal, but his gal at the time was working out there. So oh, that's okay. kind of how yeah. it was. He's the right guy for that. Yeah, and and then Scott's when I was beauty. down in Nanton, we, well, one of the assistant coaches of my. Uh, uh, Hockey team that always beat yours. But anyways, <laughs> uh, it, 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 we had him on the beer cart for ladies scramble in particular. He'd dress up as Elvis and oh, that's he awesome. would uh, he would knock it out of the park tip wise too. Huh? I'm excited for this. Uh, pork missiles at the turn, obviously. What I appreciate at any golf course, yours included, cheese that you can put on the dogs. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, taco in a bag is always popular. Very popular, yeah. yeah. And we're Gonna have with the new GPS, and we're gonna try and see how it works. But you're gonna be able to order your food through oh. the GPS, and at the snack shack, direct to the snack shack. Uh, you know, order your your hot dog yep. or your uh, taco in a bag, just to kind of help speed it up through the turn. So, it, I mean, for you to no point ordering a kokanee or a you know a red wheel lager mm. on the because all it takes is a girl to turn around. Here, here's your drink. But to get your hot dog ready or the taco in the bag, I mean, the idea is we're going to experiment with it and just make sure that it works smoothly and and everything. And if it works as we is it intended to, that'll help get everyone through the the tenth tee a little quicker and make nice. that round just a couple minutes faster as well. How many Bluetooth speakers have you guys collected in the last four or five <laughs> well, years? Yeah, collected. We sell so many oh. Bluetooth <laughs> speakers. Speakers. It's un. Believable how many we sell, but yeah, the odd one gets left on a cart. There's no question. Oh, man, I don't know how many times someone's like, I left my Bluetooth speaker, and you go back and you're like, it's gone. And they mm-hmm. leave it just kind of magnetized to the well, that or the rangefinder. Range finder, range finder oh, magnetized yeah. oh, on my range buddy finder. has the magnet one that goes on the cart, yeah. and it's always like, like the trick is like put your car keys or something in your, yeah, in your range finder carry case. Or so when like you're your grabbing that, you're like, oh, my, yeah. my range finder forgot that. It's easy yeah, to forget. It's easy to forget. And well, on the old club car carts that we used to have, there was those little baskets yeah. up on yeah, the roof. I always right? put yeah. stuff up there. Yeah, people would always forget stuff in there. Oh, so I love those car, baskets. Our new cars don't have those baskets. Oh, so shoot. It's like, but, yeah, they're nice to have, but they're very easy to forget things. Yeah, that I'm also glad yeah, that exactly. I don't there, have that option. But usually, because exactly. that's where my phone goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, then that's trouble. Well, I know. And then, but. It, if you get driving too fast it'll and bouncy ground, yeah. it, it'll fly yeah. out. And, you know, that happened to me one time. And a good thing for that find your phone thing Ooh. because I, it, boom, I knew, oh, it's right there on the first hole. <laughs> and so I was able to go find it. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, yeah. Bluetooth speakers. It's, it's the way of golf of the future. Music. I, I like it's great. the music, like, especially not when it's like the obnoxious, like loud, you can hear it a hole or two over. It's I, just for your group. Just in your group, in your cart. And it's like, I find it good. And, the litmus test for me was my uncle Diego. He's just like he's golfed for 35, 40 years, and uh, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna put music on. He's like, yeah, go for it. And he's like, I like it. I'm like, okay. It doesn't have to be music either. You know how easy on your Bluetooth speaker would be to listen to Edmonton Sports Talk? Hey Siri, play Edmonton Sports Talk. 
Hello. Boom. There Boom. it is. Listening to Evan and Sports Talk. You could listen to the hangout while you're golfing. That'd be yeah. fantastic, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. I can't think of a more relaxing thing than the soothing sounds of my voice while taking a swing at a yeah, ball. Yeah, exactly. Nice. You know, <laughs> and, and ordering a White Claw oh because you hear it on Evan and Sports Talk. Tangerine today. It's yeah, very it's a, delicious. Yeah. Maybe if, if my daughter keeps winning dance, I might have to be a beer card boy here. So, so, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not You'd cheap. You'd be a great <laughs> beer card boy. Sunshine boy can go into beer card boy. Sunshine boy, beer card boy. You're, you're all set. The resume just keeps going. Dance dad. Huh. Uh, Lars, why does ask spring rates or full price? We yes. always have uh, spring rates. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we usually keep the spring rates until you know, May long weekend ish. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's all the pricing is both low season and high seasons on our website, theranchgolf.com. Where you can book your first feet the tea time as of tomorrow at noon. Boom. Beginning next Tuesday. Tuesday. Yep. The 9th. Absolutely. Yeah, have you ever Super done sad. any work with like drones and stuff? I was just, I was thinking yeah. like hitting the ball and the drone following it and just, well, like the. I haven't done that. But yeah, I've had drone footage of overall the overall the stuff and things like that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's uh, that's There's always different. Neat. Different golf tournaments uh, always go. Yeah, can we have uh, we bring a drone out there? Yeah, sure. And so yeah. you, you know, so I've got footage of like golf tournaments all going out on the course together and oh, shotguns cool. and stuff like that and. Uh, Jordan Jeske, I think everyone yep. here knows who Jordan Jeske yeah. is. He he does just a fabulous tournament, the sip and rip at uh, the ranch every year, and he gets a drone out there and oh, footage cool. of all the all the shenanigans that go on with his tournament and stuff. So yeah, it's neat. The the perspective that drones give the viewer of a course is I find incredible. Like I like especially when I would do my golf trip with my dad and uncles, uh, or dad, brother, and uncle. Uh, I'd always, whatever courses we were thinking about playing, I would see if they'd have the fly over every hole. And then you start to kind of like, well, if, you know, if I'm playing well, I'm going to hit it here. And oh, okay, you got to stay away from that. Like I lo- something about it I just love. And and then they put like nice, like subtle music to it. And you're like, <laughs> I'm at peace. And, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a neat thing. And then now they have them where they can do the follow cams. Like it can follow the ball yeah. like Gagers talk about it. And, the way you see the flight path and how that view of the hole, it just it kind of changes the perspective or opens it up. I, it's amazing technology like that. Like we're watching F1 and they have that drone that was following yeah, the, the cars around and it's like the fastest drone ever. You're like, this is so cool. And mm-hmm. basically the views are limitless almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, technology just keeps getting better and better and right. better. And, you know, you listen, to, like we just talking about listening to Evidence Sports Talk on a Bluetooth on a golfer, how easy that is. Like, you know, like my son, who turns, he's turning six here right away. He, he does not know how to turn a TV on. Absolutely not. But he sure as heck knows how to get the iPad out and get YouTube on. And he, he could absolutely figure out how to watch Evidence Sports Talk on YouTube, but he couldn't figure out how to turn a TV on and watch F1 racing. He wouldn't know, he wouldn't know how to do that, but he yeah. could sure... Figure out how to watch Evan Sports Talk on on YouTube. I mean, it's the technology yes. and and that the the new tech the new way that people are learning how to consume all of their content is is exactly what Evan Sports Talk is doing, and yeah. and it's just the way of the future, isn't it? It's yeah. funny. Um, I I might have told this story. Stop me if I did, but the my daughter. I remember when she was quite young. I had a little um, like instant camera. You know, just those little handheld ones. And I gave it to her as a little, because, you know, phones had cameras all of a sudden. And she grabbed it, and I told her how to take the pictures and stuff. And she wanted to see them, and I said, you had to turn the dial to the picture. And then she got to the picture and was going like this on the screen, right? (laughs) And she goes, Dad, it's it's broken. But she had to press the button, (laughs) because she was so so used to it. So now she's 15, and... As your kids get older, they start like liking retro things. So she started asking about this camera because wow. I told her that story. She went and found it, and now she because all her friends have these little old snapshot cameras right. where they're not even close to their phone. No, but they but they love them because they're 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 retro and old. Oh, it's school. coming back. The, yeah, the so, photos or digital cameras coming yeah, back. Yeah, it's huh. it's hilarious. I found wow. my digital camera uh, when I was cleaning out my stuff. Uh, last week, and I was like, "Oh yeah!" And it has pictures of my Mexico trips and stuff I took like 15 years ago. 
And I actually had the box for it too. I'm like, what is wrong with me? <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, I have to crank have the to... wheel. You have to go to view mode or you have to do video mode. And then, yeah, you're hitting the button. And I'm like, this thing was was awesome back yeah. in the day. And I look at the box, like 4.2 megapixel <laughs> yeah. camera. Oh my. And yeah. Like this is pumping out like 15 or whatever. <laughs> this phone is old too. So it's just like. I think I got 100 megabytes. Yeah. Oh, like, those new ones are. Yours, yeah. the zoom in. I have a like, hundred times zoom. Yeah, like you they would zoom, zoom in on Mooner and me at a football yes. game, and you're on the other side of the stadium, like 75 feet above looking down, and you're, there's Cam and I having a conversation. Yeah, this one's 108. Yeah. yeah that one doesn't have the hundred times zoom. That's crazy. Yeah. To, I, yeah. My 12 megabytes is the, they're, yeah. That's yeah, I was like, I've got a 4.2 megapixel. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now it's like, oh, that thing is a piece of crap. That's funny. It's hilarious. But yeah, yeah so it's uh, yeah, technology with kids. They, they don't. <laughs> I'm very good with technology. I'm very savvy with it. My one fear in life is that my, my nieces will learn it better than me. Oh, and they I was will. like, no, no. And that's my goal in life is to make sure that I'm still always on top Stay of things. Stay out of the curve. It's one of those, you'll never, they'll never know it better than me. I'll still always be able to do other things that they'll never be able to figure out. All you got to do is ask AI and it'll tell you everything. Uh, oh. Ask ChatGPT. Mm, yeah. every, I do use ChatGPT every so often. Um, AI is very scary. John Stewart on The Daily Show had a nice AI thing this week. Oh, yeah. it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. It is. But... Like it's all, you can either be scared by it or use it to your oh, advantage. Absolutely, you gotta stay. Right. You gotta right. use it. You gotta or, use it. but it's like the fear I have is that it is going to take away jobs, and now we have to find new jobs. The uh, I, and well, how we're going to just find new jobs yeah. if AI just keeps taking everything. We're we're turning into iRobot here. <laughs> the more and more the world goes, the more and more, like even in that in that bit they talked about how you yeah. everyone will have their own. AI assistant. AI assistant. Yeah. Well, that's that's I robot. Everyone had their own robot. And then what happens? They got the red light and they turned on the world. And Will Smith had to save us. Is Will Smith going to save us now? Yes. Well, I'm just in the <laughs> he process. He can't even save his own marriage. How's he going to save us? <laughs> I'm, I'm just in the process of getting Microsoft Copilot put on my oh. computer at work. Yeah. I figure that it's probably going to save me ultimately once I really fully understand how to use it to its maximum potential i figure it's going to save me one to two hours a, a day Damn, of time yeah. and so it's not going to take my job but it's going to make me more efficient at my job so i can go spend more time socializing with the customers like tommy g hey, oh and yeah. or get home a little earlier to my family and things like that so right for your job but then mm -hmm. somebody else's job is completely done by ai and they don't well, have a job anymore fair. and then it turned even if you on this bit where you become actually the computer's assistant that's how, like it was. It was. Uh, it was this. a great fourteen-minute thing just on the future of AI. Yes, yeah, it's, it's something, no question. No, it's uh, it's going to change things. I, I I I enjoy using it too. Like I don't. It. I watched a thing how um, you can't you can't completely tell if like say a, a letter is AI generated. Like teachers were really worried about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, um, there's things you can now copy and paste, and it'll tell you how AI. Well, generated to, an, this. to a point, I it'll guess. percent it. It'll go. This is about yeah. X percent, which now students then just yeah. do it by AI, then rewrite some yeah. words, and it, it works. But what, you know what a teacher did in there? Like they give her the the outline of what to do, mm -hmm. and then they create the font, put it white, and put it like super super small. Oh. So when you copy and paste it, most kids won't see it. They'll put it and rewrite this like this, but then. Her little Trojan horse thing will pop up, so she'll kn they'll she'll know that they just copied and pasted. Oh. It. So, very smart teacher. I like huh. that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well hey. played. Because they usually just go Control A. Yeah. yeah. Control A, yeah. copy all. Yeah. At that point, but you can't. You, should, they you wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see that unless you're looking at everything that is. Yeah. That's actually how they deal with resumes now too. Oh really? Or they they used to be because now because it all has to go through a computer, it would look for keywords. And if you didn't have these keywords in your resume, you would not throw your resume away. And so mm. people just started hacking the yeah. system by just adding those keywords in white in the document just so that it would get to the next level. Wow. And now they've put yeah. processes in place to stop it. So how do you hire people at the ranch? Do you resume? Is it just or do you meet people face to face? I don't like well. Yeah, we po post uh, ads and then they send me their resumes and then I filter the resumes to the department managers based on the job that they okay. apply for. Then they would, like, well, our managers do it a little differently. One manager uh, 
sends them a pre-screening email with a bunch of questions that he has them answer. And then if they answer those questions properly, then that'll narrow his list down to see who he wants to interview. Uh, You know, others just look at the resumes and and call in the people based on the resume that interests them the most for an interview. But you know what's crazy? We have nine year-round staff. We go up to about 70 in the golf season. We had to hire maybe eight people in our entire operation this year because everyone's no coming back. That's like, huge. Oh, really? Unbelievable. That's got to make things so much easier. It does. Uh, you know, so that says a lot about the culture we have at the, at the golf course and the people want to want to be there. But it also uh, can be a little scary because a lot of the people are in school and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So if you keep having a massive return rate, they all graduate at the same time. And then you're and replacing then everyone. it's like, oh, yeah. shit. Shucks, because <laughs> yeah. you always need some veteran people to kind of shoot mm-hmm. the ropes, right? But yep. uh, but yeah, we have a veteran, veteran laden, laden crew uh, at the ranch, and we yeah we have a rock solid team. It's going to be going to have to start looking year. to the draft and get some. <laughs> yeah. Do you need a new ambassador? <laughs> Absolutely, we always need ambassadors. Uh, but you know, uh, here's what's an interesting point too about the job. I posted an ad. We hired a front of house supervisor, so someone uh, that works with our clubhouse manager on managing the servers and training the servers and whatnot. I had three hundred and thirty resumes come in for that job. Come on, three hundred and thirty. That took a lot of time yeah, to no filter doubt. through all those for me to, because what I would on. do is I would filter <laughs> through them. And then only pass the ones that I thought are uh, to save him some time. Yeah. I didn't. You're the want, first gatekeeper. Yeah, I, I did only sent on to him the ones that I thought he may be interested on. But for me to filter through 330 resumes, <laughs> Jesus! Yeah. Can't wait to send you a real fake resume. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this is the is the angle presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. There's always someone looking to ride the next wave. They're here for the ones who make their own White Claw. The difference is clear. Tom Guzola, Murray McCourt, Walking Gage, Matawanek with you here. It's time now for the keyword for the EST fly away to Las Vegas two non-stop flights, three nights accommodations tickets to Cirque presented by our partners in Las Vegas, the LV CBA as well as our partners here in Edmonton Fly YEG, the Edmonton International Airport, non-stop flight flights to over 50 destinations your sports trip starts with a non-stop flight from Fly YEG, visit flyyeg.com for more information uh, your keyword today to text to 780-218-9999 NFL. NFL. <laughs> oh, oh, zero, two, one, eight, nine, nine, oh, nine, oh, the Las Vegas Raiders play in the National Football League, which <laughs> is, the, is the NFL. NFL, 780-218-9999. You'll go into a draw to uh, be the qualifier to, on the hangout today for the grand prize draw, which will take place April 26th on the morning show for the trip to Las Vegas. Your keyword for the ESD flyaway today on the hangout. It is NFL. Keep your phone on. Zach, to come our YouTube trap. Uh, we'll give you a call in the next five minutes or so if you are drawn and you are the winner for today or the qualifier for today. Uh, NFL. I saw your keyword for Hello Hockey on Saturday. Yeah, it's brilliant bad. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I Bravo. told you this week wasn't my best. No. I'll show the boys on the sheet here. Well, there's only this, so many words you can come you. up with. So <laughs> that one's on Saturday. Oh, that's tough. <laughs> I can't believe you don't have like the uh, the old school <laughs> Vegas, like a, a Bugsy oh. Siegel or you know the yeah some, showgirl. Uh, you know. Yeah, it, it's All very sugar, understandable to see why you're so high up on the pay scale. Uh, that's hey, that's creativity. Man. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's uh, a, I'm, I, you did a good job. I won't say this. Like <laughs> some of them, that. Some of today them wasn't are, great. Some of them are reach, but yeah. sometimes the beauty is think, in the imperfections of that. I don't think I've had reaches. Why don't you? Ask ChatGPT for some. Oh, you did. <laughs> and that's what it came up with? <laughs> I asked ChatGPT for words associated with Las Vegas. I did, Murray. Oh, and then I asked for gosh. more and asked for more. And it oh, kept giving wow. me. So don't worry. I did use it for part of this. Oh, it did not come up with well, that Chat word. ChatGPT hasn't taken anyone's job yet. Yeah, no, no, no. Not Matty Awanix. No way. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Save the day. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new Will Smith. Uh, yeah, no, I did use it. So uh, tomorrow's morning show. I wonder if the boys will know it. The connection. I hope so. Let's so. see that one. <clears throat> Tomorrow morning show. Where do I? That's great. That's great. Yeah, that one's good. I actually Tomorrow like that morning. one. Mm. Yeah. 
That's a good one. They've got some good stuff that I am interested in. I do purchasing. stand by, said it yesterday on the show. I do also love that. Like, all, mm. I, I'm very proud of all the lock shop ones because mm. they're all connected to gambling, sports gambling in mm. some way. Yeah. So it fits uh, that show perfectly. I'm well. not going to lie. I don't get that one. I don't. I don't. That one, I'm, I'll explain to you after. Yeah. It's good. Like, it's, like it's, right. it's one that uh, I think I think Eric will know. Yeah, yes. I think Eric cuz he's a connoisseur of that. Yeah, I think he could, he could figure that one out. Yeah. Um that's a big word. People are going to spell it wrong. Oh yeah. And then, uh, and then they're going to the we'll disqualify themselves I had Venetian. That way. Yeah. <laughs> I had Venetian. I feel like that one could be a little tougher. Yeah, yeah. With the Caesars is a tough one. Yeah. You get a lot of cases. Get the A and the E and the well, the A and E, which one it goes, which yeah. way it yeah. goes. So. Yeah. 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 Um Ask ChatGPT how to spell it. There you go. Yeah, two guys. It's uh yeah, it's still not great. That's okay. It's fun. That's all right, so, buddy. Don't so. don't fret too much. No, I'm I'm still. Uh, I, I, hey, I I know when I've had good days. I know when I had bad days. And right. uh, today wasn't one of the best. But no. it doesn't matter because listeners still just has to text that in. It doesn't matter what the That's keywords, right. and they go into a draw. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, this trip to Las Vegas. Easy way to get entered into a draw to win a trip for two. Uh, so before we continue, just on the ranch. Um, our golf tournament will be at the ranch, mm. which is the EST Golf Classic, which will take yes. place July 9th. Um, throwing this out there, I sent an email to Nasty Club annual members yesterday. Just an update on how we're going to fill this tournament out. Uh, next week at some point, I will send uh, an email once again to annual members of the Nasty Club. They will get first chance to secure their spot for the tournament. Right. We will sell two sums or four sums. Um, then we will open up to monthly subscribers as of April 1st. Monthly subscribers who have been subscribed as of April 1st. They will get the next crack later in the week. And then the week following on the Monday. So that's the 15th, I think it is, or something. Let me double check that. Uh, yes, the 15th. Yeah. Then it will open up to, to everyone else. Um, if it happens to fill out, we will then build a waiting list and stuff because there's only so many T-spots. Um, so, yeah, so Nasty Club annual members will get the first chance at it, then a monthly members, then everyone else. Uh, and there's two types of groupings you could pay for. Uh, it's 200 a person, so that's 400 800 for a twosome, foursome. Or there's a $300 person, which is... 600 or 1200 for the twosome foursome the difference is the foursome is just the foursome the the more exp- the, the pr- a pricier one that one comes with a fifth golfer that will be a member of est so you might be golfing with one of these fine gentlemen sean that bell are is a lot here. of fun Let me sean just bell say like that. so uh, and that will be randomly drawn but we will have a few tea times uh you will get a fifth est member um those ones are the 600 for the two sum, 1200 for the four sum. Uh, otherwise, if you're just going to come in with a two sum or a four sum, have a great day. Um, you'll still see everyone. That one, it's 200 a person. So 400 for a two sum, 800 for a four sum, and we're just selling two sums and four sums. So keep it locked here at Edmonton Sports Talk. Keep it locked to your inbox if you're a Nasty Club annual member um, because that's coming next week. And not 1200 because you... uh, I don't put up with anything. So. <laughs> It's and, an and you're experience. not going to help anybody on the tee of number 15 because <laughs> yeah. you're going to hit the tree. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. I'll show you where not to go. <laughs> and when, uh, Eric's one of them. Uh, he won't golf, but he'll caddy with you. Yeah. He'll just <laughs> be a great time. He'll, Trust me. He'll dress like the caddy from Happy Gilmore. Not the kid, but the, the full-time guy. guy. The old guy <laughs> with well, one shoe. We want Eric in a full painter's outfit. Uh, he yeah. did that the one oh, year. Did yeah. Okay. yeah. And, like, I'm, I'm working on the, the, the gift packages. There's a lot. Like, we'll have a lot of prizes. Um, we'll have great holes um, for everyone. So um, it'll be a fun full day. I Really on really, July 9th. Yeah, I really missed our twelve sixty golf tournament. Yeah. That one was it so was much fun. So much fun, yeah, yeah, I agree. And that was something that was I know COVID messed stuff up too for, for us for a couple of years, but like that was always a blast. Well, and now it's gonna be back better it's than back. ever. EST yeah. baby. Be good. I was going th- with uh glue guy yesterday about the welcome package that everyone would get and I got through like half it. He's like, Oh that's good. And I was like, There's more <laughs> <laughs> so he's like you could have stopped right there and i was like no i'm 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 going i'm going in it's it's year one uncle it's matthew first one. spoiling so everyone like and who well, was, who was or, go ahead i was just say your goal is to make it the best tournament in edmonton it is yeah there's some it's gonna be tough there. to do year one well, i will throw I that out there but it's, it's, it's gonna be developed that like, but that is i want to be the funnest 
and it, like great golf tournament that yeah. there is in them. That it is every year everyone's circling. Okay, when's the ESD Golf Classic happening? Because that's the one I want to be in. Remember uh, the 1260 one? We had the lady from Jungle Juice. And uh, like the bug spray, uh, bug spray stuff. company, yeah. At, or was it Doctor Doom Dr. or whatever? Doctor Dr. Doom, Doom yeah. and they had the the jungle juice bug spray. And I think she was having a good time because she was wearing like shorts and a t shirt. But by the time we got to her hole, she was like in a swimsuit and and like oh. she's like just take whatever you guys want. I'm tired. <laughs> and, and she's got like a full wine there and a couple of <laughs> seltzers there. I'm like, oh, she must have had a great time. She's like, take anything you want, guys. We're like, thank you. I still have some of that. This was <laughs> five years ago. This might be uh, expired. It, it might may not work be expired, again. but that's, that's what, how much uh, of it there Troy was. Troy won the hole in one. That is, yeah. And that's what he won. Yeah, uh, T-Roy. That was, he got a bunch of uh, of all that stuff. He says it was great stuff, though. It was. Oh, he <laughs> loved it. <laughs> Nothing came close to you when he put that stuff on. <laughs> Uh, we've got our qualifier for the EST of Flyaway 4 today on the Hango. Who do we got on the line today? Adam. Adam, congratulations. You are qualified. Have you ever been to Las Vegas before? Uh, yeah, I've, I've been a few times, but I haven't been for I don't know, since 2019, I think it was. Okay, so it's not too, too long ago. Uh, if you win this trip to Vegas, what's the number one thing you would love to do to get back You know, once, once you're back in Vegas? Um. I'm really interested in checking out the sphere, actually. Yes, yes, yes. I stand like that. It, that that was the thing I wanted to do when we got to Vegas. It's absolutely incredible, um, and I would highly recommend that. Yeah, if you're the winner of this trip, go check out the sphere. Uh, well, congratulations, Adam. You're into the draw. Uh, April 26th on the morning show, we'll do the grand prize draw. So be sure to keep your phone on because if you're the winner, the boys will give you a call. Let you know that you're off to Vegas. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congrats. Best of luck. There's Adam, our qualifier for the ESD Flyaway today on the Hangout. Your next chance to qualify. Coming up during the lock shop with Dusty and Huss. Uh, and then one more chance today on Edmonton Sports Talk on Two Guys and a Goalie with Dusty, Gager, and Cass. How many more weeks do we When was the last left? time Adam was in Vegas? Uh, 2019. Oh, not bad. Yeah, he said it's been a while, but 2019. We've had people, it's been like 12 years or whatever mm -hmm. it is. And um, I'm sure he figured out. He wants to go to the Sphere. It sure looks things. awesome. One thing I'm surprised about. Three more weeks after this week of this. Yeah, we're on, like we're getting there. But yeah, the we're one thing I'm surprised now. with the qualifying is there are a lot of people that have been like, I haven't been to Vegas. I'm what? really surprised yeah. by that too. Just the amount of people. Like, oh, but the ones that have been like, they know. They yeah. know. I felt With I was kind of in the minority of like, no. yeah, I'm very rare for having never been to Vegas until this past February. But yes, we've uh, there's been a lot that have come on. Like, yeah, I've never been, which is great. Mm -hmm. They could be the winner and go experience Vegas like I did. I have a question for you, Murray. Okay. Have you played the win that win golf course? I have not. Is do you think it's worth it, or from what you've heard? No. <laughs> it's it's ridiculously priced. It is ridiculously priced. Yeah, like there's for that money, there are so many other golf courses that I think people would want to choose before before that one. I, I mean, I'm sure it's a great golf course, and I mean, Vegas Strip is a backdrop, sure, but mm -hmm. it's a big, big, big ticket. To, I, what are we looking at? It, well, it's like. Uh, I low think. season, it was like 350, 400 yeah, American. Plus, it's... you have to stay at the Wynn Venetian or Encore Palazzo. Oh. And uh, that, otherwise, yeah. you can't book a tea time. And I think it gets up to like six, six. 650 or something like that, yeah. I want to say. Like, that's. <laughs> that, that better come with a lot of free gambling chips. Yeah. yeah free <laughs> play, <laughs> and dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I better get a drone delivery. That's yeah. all yeah. I want. Exactly. Like, you're, you're really <laughs> into this drone delivery. I saw Michael Jordan right now. You need to just develop this. You I've need got, to go I've got sell it to golf courses. I've got a drone. Well, I saw Michael Jordan's course. Like, yeah. His ex that's, 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 that's for just him. No, when you go out there and golf, you can go on your phone and it'll bring like 12 beers to you. I just think. Oh, with saying, a like, drone. I hmm? think a of, with a drone. With a drone, yeah, yeah. it's amazing. I, I would think you now need to just stockpile a bunch of drones and go have a business meeting with Murray and be like, "I've got you covered." I bought a drone for my son, and he never used. It. I use it. It's fun <laughs> to. I go into the back of the school and fly it around, but yeah, it's. I don't think it could. It may be able to carry one beer. 
but that's it. So, mm. but, uh, yeah, that, you, you need to start a engineering this. Drone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they have them for it. I mean, that's well. Don't let others do it. This is for you. Yeah, no, I got, <laughs> Maddie, I got I'm slinging wieners, <laughs> other things. I, I, there's a lot. There's a lot. Of <laughs> we don't want to hear you anything about you and your wiener. There. <laughs> <laughs> All year this year, right? He's, All year yeah, he's yeah. at the yeah. stadium. Well, I know that, but, but you've you, got the good setup at this. Like you've got a nice setup at uh, Commonwealth. Yes, when, that is a good when setup. When we're slumming it down in Section D, we come and see Joaquin. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we have pretty good seats, too. I can't wait for Yours the season. Is nice. yeah. I can't wait, too, yeah. actually. It's just, when, when it's summer, I, they, they, like we've always talked about it. We're, we're getting to that point, but it's Masters now next week. And yeah, I love it. NHL NBA playoffs are going on, and then it's the Elks and the Riverhawks and the Stingers, and it's just this golf. That's the nest, that. and um, I'll yeah, get frustrated sure. with the Elks on the field this year potentially. And <laughs> well, I, I hope not. I hope not too. But I, I'm, I don't. I'm not happy with the move still. So unless they win football games, is I'm going to believe otherwise. Is there going to be a uh, ownership announcement before home opener? I believe so. Cool. Have you been trying so. to pry and touch base with people? Not because really, I no. I uh, last I I heard there was twenty There's applicants 20. or something like that. I I which, heard, but uh, which you'd have to think four or five are good. Yeah, I mean, like the, you'd have most a couple. Of those like, are probably uh, you could throw them away. Throw them away. Like yeah. when you got all your resumes, the three hundred some, and they have to go through it, and which ones go, which ones go forward, yeah, and which ones I mean, get thrown there's away. There's still be some that like there, there's probably a good probably ten. That they could quickly go, we're good. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fascinating if it all plays itself out that that quickly, and then what that means for the future. I mean, I'm sure it'll mean good things for the future. But what so. what is that going to look like? It's and how going to be. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to to see. But what Rick Lalisher said to me was, and this made so it just made sense for the team to do it now. So we could do it when we're in a, a good financial, well, not they're not in a good financial position, no. but a, 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 a decent financial situation where it's not us just handing over the keys because yeah. we're bankrupt. The or keys whatever, went right? to the CFL and the CFL is having to right. sell it. So and, they're doing and it's it. selling a, you know, they're doing it in the dollar. Right. Mm-hmm. What they feel is the right yeah. way and the best for the organization by being proactive rather than reactive, like Montreal as an example, uh, that great example, yeah. right? So. You know, we'll see. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, I've, I've been a big fan, as you guys have forever, and mm-hmm. you know, so I want to see the the team and the organization do well. And uh, yeah, I, I but I I'll ultimately think the the success is needs to happen on the field. If if it happens on the field, all the rest of the stuff is just going to work itself out. That's my belief. Um, the league, to its credit, has gotten good owners in after the Montreal thing. Uh, getting Palado, like, there's big bucks. And talking to Jason Moss uh, last season, he's like, yeah, he's like, the financials are there. He likes the team. He's around. I didn't think he knew me, but then we, you know, we started winning a couple games, and he's around. Mm-hmm. And he's following the team. He knows all the guys. And uh, Omar Doman, what he's doing in Vancouver with the Lions mm-hmm. is fantastic. Yeah. Bob Young and uh, Hamilton has been really good. MLSC with the Argos, it seems like it's a little bit better. Well, though they don't care. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, now, Calgary Sports and Entertainment. They'll be the next ones to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And then hopefully they get it right here. Saskatchewan and Winnipeg are on good footing, which is great. And I think the Red yeah. Blacks are in a good spot right now, too. So Saskatchewan's got issues. They've, they've, they? Like, why? Well, not ownership necessarily, but there's there's anger towards the organization right now. And they, you know, they got like I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to be in an Elks position that they're going to have to sell in the next couple of years. But there's a lot of anger towards Craig Reynolds, the president, oh, okay. and things aren't best. So they one, they also better win on the football field. But two, they've taken their fan base very much for granted, and fans are starting to not show up hmm. because they're like, no, we're not just the well, the right. wallet for you. Even but though, to, to me, a massive thing needs to be, and you and I have talked about this before with Trey Ford, like we need to see consistency of who's on the teams year over year over year. Quit this one-year contract mm-hmm. garbage, which this year you started to see some two-year stuff, but 
you can't flip half the team every year yeah. and expect your fans to be able to embrace the team. They need, you need to know who who's on the team, and you need to they need to be integrated into the community and do some you know be out and involved and and that type of stuff. And and we need to know who these players are, and they need to be here for a while in all the cities. Has the CFL grown? In the U.S. a little bit, do you think? Like, Dusty talked about how at the beginning of the season on ESPN, I don't know if it's on the Ocho or whatever, but there was there was quite a lot of viewership of the CFL on ESPN. And they're not on ESPN anymore. Oh, aren't they? Last okay. year they CBS. went to CBS Sports Network okay. until Labor Day. Um, and the rest, it was on a, a streaming service the CFL oh, okay. had that was free. Um, and CBS Sports Network doesn't get rated, so no. they don't have numbers. Okay. So ESPN two had numbers. So you CBS see Sports them. Network doesn't so have numbers. I remember he said they were quite good. They were it was bad. over a hundred thousand. Yeah, out they, of they the would US, get like yeah. two hundred thousand or something, which is good because like a game up here on TSN get three hundred to four hundred thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So like it, it it gave a little bump. They also used to carry the Grey Cup down south. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last year the Grey Cup and the CFL playoffs weren't on TV down south. It was only on the streaming package, yeah. which. The problem for that is, is you now have to tell people we have the streaming package and we're up here. Whereas when it's on ESPN two, you might you hope that someone's flipping yeah. by and goes, "Oh, see if I maybe Football. I'll watch yeah. this." Yeah. Um, so I'll be very intrigued to see how Randy takes this moving forward. I think though CBS Sports Network, I think the payment that they're getting from them is more than what ESPN two was. So oh. financially, a little bit better. Cool, but eyes maybe not as good. Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't, I don't know what to make of Randy's time as commish. Like there's yeah. there's a lot of good and bad like like not the good, as bad as you just, Jeffrey Orridge but. I know but the good you, we've talked about the good of just the new ownership like there's I don't think the CFL once the Elks now actually sell yeah I don't think we'll see and even then they're relatively okay but as stable of a CFL ownership as we've seen yeah. in a long time yeah TV numbers went up last year in Canada that's good twenty five fifty four numbers went up in that that's so the important. youth numbers came up in that. Um, but we've had CFL 2.0. We've had get that tenth. Team, we've had damn this. It. Uh, to me, this US deal still isn't yeah. fully there, and yeah. it's just there's a lot that it's just like oh. Where would it go? Halifax. 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 And if this doesn't work, they're going to Quebec City. The Halifax is like they've got months to get this figured out. Yeah. What about Victoria? Could Victoria do it? I don't think the BC Lions would like that yeah. because oh, they've no, actually yeah. started working on trying to get Victoria out there. They are playing a game in Victoria this season. Oh, okay. Uh, it's Touchdown Pacific, which I think sold out. Yeah. Um, is it Argos and Lions? I can't remember. The Lions are taking on someone. Yeah. I keep going. I believe maybe the Okanagan in Ooh, Kelowna. Kelowna. Like really? what, what the CFL is nowadays, it's not a 40,000. Yeah, fair. Some markets might be, but you need the 20,000, 18,000. Could you put an 18, 20,000 seat stadium in Kelowna and get enough people to show up for that? Probably. That'd be fire. Pardon the pun. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, they don't like. I don't know how much other sports they fully have going on. There's Kelowna of the league that the Riverhawks are in. WCL. Yeah. Um, you're giving them their own full on. That's a great team. little. You got the community there that could come support it. There's also a lot of people that'll go in their summer. Maybe they go yeah, for go, a great time. Just go uh, party. Match it up for yes. their well, with the, their the team going tourism. To... Yeah, the yeah. tourism that goes on there. I, I don't mind that at all. Weather's a little bit better than yeah. it can be. So when you get into the the later season, mm-hmm. you're probably going to get some better better weather, and a lot of guys would want to play there. You would think, right? Like mm-hmm. that's a not, that's not a mm-hmm. bad spot. Yeah. So that's the one I always looked at. That's that's cool. I never thought about that, Manny. I think you'd have to do like for that one to happen because you, you got to go to east a little bit more. You got to balance there first. So it's got to be Quebec City or Halifax. Yeah. I think if you add both, then you could add Kelowna. That'd be awesome. And if that you could get to awesome. twelve. Twelve would be great. That yes. would be the sweet spot. Perfect number. Yeah. Yeah. Like right there, six six. Yeah. You're fantastic yeah. at that point. Four teams on each side make the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I like it. All right, commissioner. I should be in charge of the Canadian <laughs> football. I know you're no I would also the commissioner. Start, I would also start the league a little sooner. Just yes. throw that out there. So well. you know, when I when Randy's when Randy's done, I'll throw my resume. Get that I chat like GPT I got, resume I got, ready. Oh, that done. Put I'll your throw commissioner. Edmonton Sports Talk COO, well, former commissioner, the Nielsen Show Draft exactly. commissioner. I was going to say junior. the Nielsen Show Draft. You already have experience as a commissioner. Yeah, I mean it's not how, good, uh, but whatever. How big is Mosaic? <laughs> how many? Mosaic is I want to say is it only thirty three? Thirty three, five. But then it's, it's like a sweet spot. But it's expandable. Uh, what do you think? Or I, is it I like 
Where? 30 to 35 for the CFL. I, I don't like dipping into the 20s. I don't like dipping below 20. Like, to me, that's just like, come on. We're If MLS can get 25 to 30, CFL can definitely yeah. Yeah. Well, should I be able to. I think that's a 30 to 35 thousand seat mm-hmm. arena. That's, 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 very, good. that's, that's good. a good time. It's like Winnipeg's. I've been to uh, IG Field for the Heritage Classic. I really liked it. I'm like, this is a good CFL stadium. Mm-hmm. Now they've had, they had they cut corners a little bit when they initially built it. They've had to fix those things. <laughs> But now you're like, damn, this is this is a good CFL yeah. stadium. And then the one in Mo- Mosaic in Regina looks beautiful. Yeah. Like, it just looks really nice. MLS average is 22,000 overall. Yeah. Montreal is 17.5. Vancouver's 16.7. And Toronto is 25.3. Elks, Elks were 27 but, and change last year average. So they'd be what fourth, I, I remember fifth reading. in MLS. Yeah. Um, they do have more games in soccer. There is that, I will say, yeah. or football. Um the one thing I will say about Canadian soccer, at least, at least with TFC especially, one thing that has always been said is that actually the Argos have always done good TV numbers in Toronto. People don't go to the games, but they actually oh. get good numbers in the city of Toronto. Huh. And TFC, they don't get good TV numbers, almost as if like the majority of TFC fans just actually go to the game. So but no one else pleasure. watches it. Yeah, but no one else watches it. Yeah. So... Funny, MLS yeah. is, a, is a weird one for me. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and with ownerships, uh, is it Minhas? I was going to say we should talk they, about the Stingers. Uh, owner, jumped in as part owners now of the Edmonton Stingers. And, yeah, um, the ones uh, uh, Dragon stand. Yeah, Manjeet and Ravinder Minhas. Uh, they're from Calgary, but Mountain mm. Crest. That was the first thing I thought of. Was I remember Mountain Crest? <laughs> but uh, I think this is that. good. Yeah, this was announced yesterday. Yep, mm. uh, they're in as part owners of the uh, the Stingers, and we talk about like fun things to do in the summer. Those games are a lot of fun. The the Job that they've done at is it the Flair Airlines hangar? Yeah, um, it's nice. It's mm-hmm. nice. Like the the lighting in there is good. The way they set up the court, I think they've reorientated the uh, where the court is. I think it's closer to the uh, one end zone where the seats are, and then on the other side they put in like little club seating kind of thing. And you get your shoes shined, and <laughs> I think like you get haircut stuff like that, and the new seats in there too, like. They've spruced it up, and it's a good time for a reasonable amount of money. So this hmm. this is a good thing. Like the CBL seems to be humble beginnings, but like letting it grow organically and not trying to overreach too early. I feel like from an outsider's point of view, two leagues start at the same time: CBL and the CPL for soccer. Yeah, the CPL. I just keep looking at it and going, I could see that folding any year now type thing. CBL looks very strong and it's got a good yeah. footing and a yeah. good foundation. Like the CPL, there's talk that Valor might be up for sale, which I think the Bombers own them, but they might just oh. be putting them up for sale. Pacific might be up for sale, which is in Victoria. Oh, um, we saw the loss of FC Edmonton. There was supposed to be expansion one day into Saskatchewan. That still hasn't happened. There's supposed to be expansion into Southern Ontario. I think Windsor area, that still hasn't happened. Mm. It's just like there's a lot of been a lot of promises. Nothing's happened. Maybe ownership changes. Whereas the CBL... They did it a different way. They owned all the teams. Edmonton, I think, was the first test ground to sell a team. Yeah. And that's the own, like, an ownership group that's now not run by the league. Right. But they seem to be doing good things. They've got a TV deal with TSN, so some games are on TSN, or they're on TSN Plus, the rest of them. Um, The CBL looks like it's it's here to stay. Yeah. And the CPL, not as much, which concerns me because we need our own soccer league to develop our players. Drake owns Mm -hmm. the Scarborough team. Really? Yeah. Like Scarborough basketball? Or, stars. or basketball. Soccer. Okay. Basketball. Wow. Yeah, Jay Cole on that team for a little bit. Jay Cole was on that team. He was supposed team. to come to Edmonton. He didn't come to Edmonton. He had a concert mm-hmm. that they sold out. Yeah. Hmm. Hey, who was this guy that just came here? Noah something. Noah Khan? Yeah. What He's is a big this? deal. He's a huge deal. Yeah. It's, it's funny. If, you, if you're like over the age of like 35, you have no idea who he is. No. So, Never heard of him. Uh, and, and, but he sold out Rogers, and yeah. younger people apparently love this guy. He's I remember positive. Re- is he? I find his music very bouncy and positive. I, don't think I've ever I saw him to on it. SNL, and I was like, "This guy's good." What's the genre of his music? Uh, like folky pop. Yeah. Gene. Well, I was on the panel with Gene, and Gene met him, and like he didn't realize the magnitude of this guy. Yes. Like, yeah. You know, and he was like, and he asked me, "Who have you heard of him?" I go, "I haven't heard of him. Who is this guy?" Folk he's, pop. Yeah. Is what he's considered. Pop. He's a. I guess he's a, a big deal, and everyone was like going nuts, and mm-hmm. Gene kind of felt bad that he didn't. 
No, if you're not of a certain age, <laughs> yeah. like you will have no idea who this guy uh-huh. is. And, and I remember we were talking about Rogers Place venues and and how at one point it was a little empty. And I was going through the list and I even got to like Noah Kihan and I couldn't. And Trev was like, yeah, Noah Kahn. Like, <laughs> just like, and it's like, oh, okay, well, no, I don't know who this is, but he's huge. <laughs> and massive. People a massive. said the concert was unbelievable. Yes. So uh, I liked him on SNL. That was my first uh, oh, really? experience of Noah Kahn. Huh. I did, no, listen, I went and listened to a couple of songs after that, and then I'm like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> but like, I so you're not. It's not on your pl- regular playlist, then. No, mm-hmm. no, I'm over 35. I guess oh. that's the prereq. Oh, that's what but I, I enjoyed like, it. Like, like, talk to anyone of that age. Yeah, like, if like, you're going over 35, good. you're gonna that you're gonna good. find most people like I, I don't know who it. that is. Yeah, right. But if you go to younger people, like I know Trev knows. I think if we went to Zach and said who's Noah Khan, he would know. Immediately, like his it, his music is way better than like the rap you hear now. It's like, <laughs> like you don't even understand Ooh. what they're saying. It's Josh GPT. Clawson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Josh, Josh like, <laughs> it's all like voice auto tuned, and you're like, those aren't even real words, and it has like a good beat. That's all that the rap is now, and you're like, what is this? Noah Khan was very good because it's like authentic music he writes. I might have to try. Kyle plays yeah. play yeah. instruments. Chat. He sold out every concert in Canada. Good for what? him. Like he was, oh. I enjoyed him. All right. I'm going to have to. Big deal? I'm going to have to listen to it on the way to the ranch after yeah. after this. Noah Khan. So, so, Murray, what, like this year, obviously you're probably working, but what does a master's weekend, if you're off, what does it look like for you? Are you buckling in, settling down, and, and wire to wire it? Or are no. you. you are you wait until Sunday, a little bit sent? Yeah, or I think I'll follow it a little bit on day one, kind of see, just kind of follow, see who's up there. When I, I mean, if Tagger's playing, yeah. okay, now I'm buckled. Okay. But without Tagger, you know, I'm kind of waiting to kind of see, well, you know, follow on my phone, you know, catch a few shots while I'm having lunch or whatever and just follow it but then you know sunday i want to i want to sit and watch but we're gonna be open i'm gonna be playing golf sunday now yeah yeah uh, that's where <laughs> my sunday yeah. match i'm not gonna be watching I'll, yeah. I'll hopefully get done early enough that i'll be able to get to my wife's parents house for family dinner and maybe catch the you know, you know coming up 18 the, the what time is the tea time usually Ten. well we play at 11, 11 once my yeah. show starts yeah, yeah. but uh 10 we'll play at 10 so yeah. we'll be done at two so Watch a little bit. Just, like it'll be about four or five holes in the leaders when you're done. Yeah, so have a glass of red in the clubhouse Fantastic. with the boys after, then speed demon it to get my wife and son, and then make sure that my my father and I'll be watching it. So he'll have a glass of red sitting for me in the basement, <laughs> and then I'll be on the, fa- the comfy couch, watch the tail end of it there. Yeah, that's nice. It's such that's a great nice. weekend. Have you yeah. been to Augusta? Absolutely not. I, I've told the story on. On the hangout before, I got invited once to go. It, my son was born on April twenty second, but I got invited the year my son was born. My wife was pregnant mm-hmm. with an April due date, and I talked to my wife about it, and she said, "Well, yeah, you can go. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity." I'm thinking to myself. This is a one and only time in my life I'm going to become a dad. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I am not yeah. going to take this risk. I turned down no. the uh, invitation uh, to go and stayed home. And then my wife didn't have the baby till <sighs> later. So I could have been gone and been safe, but I just... If you would have went, could, you would have missed it. Though, I could sure. not have <laughs> taken that uh, that risk and, and missed out on that. So no, I haven't. And no invitation has showed up since. Hmm. You guys, you been there? No, no but I've never to. been to Atlanta. Maybe we just need area. to take EST there. Hmm. I've been. Um, You've gone to Augusta? Yeah. Well, I told the story. Yeah, he though. told the story. He almost, he almost got arrested. Yeah, I got... I, like, he, I, not during the Masters. No. Yeah. no. But then um, I was... The one year that I decided to play on as many teams as possible, um, <laughs> I was down and playing for the Augusta Lynx for a few games, and uh, one of the season ticket holders gave me... Or was going to give me passes for for Monday through Wednesday to go watch practice. Wow! So he could just watch. And she said, "This is the best." That's what everyone says. It's the best it's time to the, go. If you're going to go, go for the practice because you can go wherever you want and follow these guys, and they drop like four balls 
and they hit like all these different shots because they're looking at different pin locations, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a lot of fun. But then I I got uh, I played too good. I got called back up. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. Did it the right time. The year I chose to play in as many different places because <laughs> uh, you made that choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, were. we need to just take EST on the road there and like connect with the Matt Augusta and be like, you know, we're gonna cover it. Yes. And we'll, we'll do live yeah, shows. Yeah, we'll yeah, rent an Airbnb or something. I've like. inquired because of the oh. VIP golf show. I've inquired, what would it take for me to get a media pass to go there? And I was laughed at. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Like, so, I don't know. Hey, I had my own golf show for six freaking years. I yeah. can't get a media pass to Augusta. What's going on? I, uh, oh, we I, could always make the submission every year. Yeah, I hate that enough. they don't, they used to have, one of the reasons way back when, the reason why I bought a 3D TV was I bought it Augusta, like uh, the Masters weekend and uh, watched the, I think golf in 3D is the best. I think that would have was the only sport I think would have been great in 3D. It's, it's the only one that's any good. But I couldn't believe how hilly it actually was because it, it gave you actually perspective on, on each hole and you could see the greens, how they, how they were shaped and mm -hmm. things. It was, it, I, I, I'd never really sat down and watched a ton of golf until, until it was broadcast in 3d. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Gave you a completely different perspective of the course. It's it's long, man. That's a lot of and, walking. And hilly. You don't it's really, really hilly. You like, don't see that on TV. No, not at no. all. Like, I forget what hole it was, but it was like this, up and down, up and down before they got. And the, the stands, you could actually see how long and far back they were. It was great. Man, that was cool. They should do that again, but I guess 3D TVs, that was a kind I, of fact. I'm so glad 3Ds didn't, 3Ds didn't last. I don't want to be throwing on glasses to watch my TV. I don't want to have to have a bunch of glasses ready if somebody comes over. No, that's I was point. I was against the three D, and I'm so glad it failed. It's just uh, give me get me to HD TV now or eight HK eight K eight K. Get me to eight K. The cameras it's, are in eight eight K now. I believe yeah. the, the process yeah. is beginning. Yeah, We're, like the problem is Canada hasn't gone to even four K television yet. I know. We've had TSN and Sports have done it, but it's all out east. Everywhere else is actually really fully embraced the yeah. 4K broadcast. We haven't done that yet. It's only but Jays games that's 4K, isn't it? Jays was. games, uh, Toronto. If um, if Raptors play at home, I don't know if Sportsnet does it. I'm assuming they do. TSN plays Raptors games at home on 4K. Hockey night. Um, Have they done? I don't 4K, know if yeah. the hockey. I'm assuming it might be um, CFL games that are played in Ottawa, Hamilton, or Toronto can be in 4K. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. So well, maybe. let's get to 8K. So can uh, we talk about my burger story from Chicago? <laughs> oh, yes, actually, that's a great idea. Was, this is the ESD <laughs> angle presented by White Club, Matt Awanek, Walking Gage, Murray McCord, Tom Gazzola with you here live on EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Tune in iArt Radio as well as those watching on YouTube. Uh, so when Murray was the last here uh, before his trip to Chicago, it was oh. me, you, and Gager. Yeah. Gager. Um, and we wanted you to try a hot hamburger. We're, well, we're trying to convince the hamburgers are... Yeah. A and great I'm, meal. And I'm like, why would you have a hamburger when you just have a steak, Tommy G? Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but there's something so satisfying about the simplicity and beauty of a well, burger. But you put that really well. Better than we ever said that. That day. is that, that is was true. very succinct, like Thank perfect. You. Okay, Thank so you. my wife and I go to Chicago, <laughs> and we're staying at the Fairmont downtown. Yeah. And first thing we do, we go to the concierge. Okay, listen, we want... The best deep dish pizza there is. Where do we go? And the, I mean, the concierge knows their stuff. Yes. Right? I mean, they know their stuff. Mm -hmm. So he says this really place. That he says. Uh, not Giordano's, right? No. <laughs> okay, we good. did end up at Giordano's. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is not good. Yeah. <laughs> but this other place that he sent us to, he said, make sure you ask for the butter crust done right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And we did. And oh my gosh. Like that. Deep dish pizzas out of this world, and I mean, we we were there for anniversary, so we said we wanted a fancy steak and seafood place. We yep. wanted a fancy steakhouse, which a fancy steakhouse. I got a picture. I, sitting right beside us was uh, Chris Chelios and Rick Sutcliffe. Come on, Cy Young Award winning. So, so I ended up visiting That's with cool. those guys for a while. Get a, my wife and I got our picture taken with Rick Sutcliffe and Chris, cool. Chris Chelios. So that was fun. But we wanted like a. The first night after the deep dish pizza, we wanted, you know, nothing crazy fancy. We wanted like an upscale pub is what we wanted. And he goes, oh, I've got the place for you guys. 
I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say the name of it quite yet. <laughs> okay. I know you two know the name of it. <laughs> okay. But you don't know the name of it. But he goes, this place is really upscale, and it's got the best burger in Chicago. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to order a steak. But <laughs> anyways, so we decided to go there. And this place is unbelievable. For an appetizer, I got the focaccia bread. comes out warm with butter. And oh, my God, like this bread was so good. The wine, I had a, a glass. It was a French wine with an Italian grape was my first glass. Oh, it was so good. And then the next one was a, 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 a different French wine. Oh, so good. But I'm a pretty picky eater. And I'm looking at the menu and everything seems a little fancy for me. Except for the burger. <laughs> best so burger? I, I, I am like, okay, he says this is the best burger in Chicago, so I'm going to order a burger. So I got, just as I said, just the burger, cheese, and the bun. And I sent you guys a picture of it. It was a good-looking burger. It was a really <laughs> good burger. I, I truly enjoyed it. It good. was a fabulous burger. But... Where you just can't make this shit up. (laughs) The name of the restaurant, the swanky restaurant, was called The Gage. Yes. It's meant to be. Are you absolutely kidding me? We have this conversation about burgers, and I'm like, I'm never going to eat a burger. I order a burger, and the freaking restaurant is called The Gage. I sent these guys a picture of the plate at the restaurant because I didn't tell. I said, you're never going to believe what this place is called. <laughs> and how I told them was I took a picture of the plate that has the gauge and That's the beautiful. logo on it, and it's like, oh, my God. The universe works in mysterious ways and the parallels and all that. It was meant to be. <laughs> well, wow. That's right? hilarious. We're in, we're in a simulation. These are the things that you <laughs> yeah. point to. Like, this is, these yeah. are the reasons that we're in a simulation. This, this is, is not real. Yeah. Someone's controlling all it, of this. It was a really good burger, though. Yeah. I have to, I, I have to readily admit. So it's probably like a grounded up white you like well, it was, it was, it was prime rib yeah. or prime, prime rib, rib yeah. Right so on. yeah, it's like you can get the proper amount of marbling in there and make it. It's just oh. and, and the other thing we talked about on that show was a smashed hungry. burger. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell is a smashed burger? Yeah. Well, there was a restaurant that we didn't go to it because it's called. It was called the Smashed Burger. Yeah, I've been there. And I'm like, huh, I never heard of a smash burger till the hangout the other day. And now here's a, I'm walking past a restaurant. Oh, the smash burger. So I told my wife the story, but it, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't like, well, I'm not going to go. Ranch. Smash hey. burgers at the Yeah, ranch. that would be good. Well, That's a quick and easy thing. Have a burger at the ranch. I, I'm not a big burger guy. I've had it at the ranch. We have a good burger. Yeah. We oh, yeah. have a really good burger. Uh, but I have steak every day. <laughs> <laughs> Steak's great. Yeah. Steak is great. A, a burger, the bun can make and break it. Oh, you need a, you need a great bun. Yeah, you yeah. need. Yeah, but, um, good bread it makes the world yeah. go round, in my opinion. Yeah. I love good bread. If it's too big of a bun, no bueno. If it's too thin of a bun, it's a mess. You it's the same thing that. on a hot dog, too. I That's mean, if right. you get this little hot dog and a big, huge bun, like, what the hell is this? I, I rip half the bun off and throw it out yeah. because it's you need to have the right combo. But I could just do a hot dog and a regular piece of bread. Yeah, if you need to but slum it, it or whatever. It better it not be it's Wonder great. Bread, though. It better be like a, a good nah, quality I can do bread. Wonder Bread. That's oh, what I have. I grab right. that single piece of whole wheat bread get or whatever. The, just put it around. Put your quick to- condiments. Eat that. Quick and easy. And when you eat the burger, it's a good idea to uh, flip it. Flip it. Because the juices, the juices go, the other go way. into the top. Because the top part of the bun yeah. is a little bit bigger. So it absorbs the juice more. You did not give me this tip before I, I know. ate this burger. I've never even well, next time we'll, we're smart. both going to Chicago, that's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I know go where to go. Yeah, exactly. I got some places. Oh, yeah. I'll wear my jersey in there. Boom. <laughs> uh, Mr. Joaquin, oh. welcome back. Uh, that's usual great. table, sir. Yeah. Yeah, no, smash burger. Murray, it's your next step. I, I like the uh, sautéed onions on those things mm-hmm. and then put that on there. I know you're you're a, you're no, a simplistic no, no. guy. But yeah, very simple. Yeah, nice glass of wine, <laughs> basic. Yeah. Complex complexity is the is the vintage of grape with you. I, I get that. I get that. I like so, that. Uh, French wine with the Italian grape. 
magnifique. Oh, that was, that was magnifique. That was a really good one. <laughs> you can see it on your face when oh. you're talking about it. You lit up. I, like, I, 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 I was laughing out loud. I think even my son goes, what's so funny? I go, oh, I told this guy to go get a burger. He's, it's at a restaurant. It's, it's your last name. He's like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, it's way more than it's cool. It's way more man. than cool. Like, <laughs> my the of it. Like, it, it, He was probably near you. He probably, you were like the second star in a game in Chicago one time or something. You yeah. Were, so they named a restaurant maybe, after you. Maybe. Yeah. It's all your fault. God, that was, oh, what a great city. I love that yeah. city. Oh, I was Michigan so Ave. It was nice just oh, cruising down so there. So good. So cool. Like, yeah, fabulous, fabulous city. Yeah. And, you know what? Went to another Blackhawks game, and it was not the first time I've been in Chicago. But I tell you what, like, yes, Rogers Place is a beautiful arena, but the it's a nice arena than, than the United Center, like on the outside, and whatnot. But the concourse and the offerings for drink and food and everything like yeah. that in Chicago is so yeah. cool. Yeah, it's yeah. so unique and so fun. Like it's better better than Vegas, even. It, uh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's, the, I like the aesthetic of the concourse and like the design. It has that like sh- uh, Chicago salt and pepper, black and yes. white kind of with yeah. the yeah. elongated yeah. That, letters. That, that makes like, sense. I'm yeah. in Chicago, like yeah, it, it very much a yeah. Chicago staple. And yeah, they have some great. It's like I think people from the West overlook Chicago because if they're gonna go that far east, they're going oh, to New York, mm-hmm. Boston, the East Coast, and all of that. But Man, Chicago is a cool spot. Boston's another unreal city. Yeah. I didn't spend too much time. I spent more time in Chicago, but um, yeah, man, you just the the food choices, the things that you know, it's it's ridiculous, especially in the United Center. That's mm. crazy. Yeah, that's, that's so, where I, so cool. I, I remember the one time I, me and um, Todd Marchant and David Oliver, we snuck into a Bulls game and watched mm. the Bulls and saw Jordan spank the uh, Trailblazers. That was awesome. <laughs> David Oliver's been here a lot lately. I know, I know. He texted me a couple times. Um, you guys are buddies still, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, what a great guy. Really big deal coming out of Michigan, too. Like, he was, uh, he was really, really good. Really good. His, he got a little bit quicker. The foot speed killed him a little bit, but what do you do now? Uh, Assistant GM. I uh, can't remember which team, hmm. but he's he's been at Rogers yeah. Place a lot lately. Yeah. Well, probably scouting for playoffs. Uh, arena text that came in. I saved this because I hoped it came back up, and we ended up talking about arenas since we're talking about Chicago and stuff. Dudley sent this in earlier when we started the show. Said. The way you guys talk about these arenas being located in sketchy areas makes me wonder what other teams thought about playing at the Coliseum because that definitely wasn't located in the best area. Uh, United Ooh. Center is not in a great area. No, no terrible. terrible. Very bad yeah. area. Terrible area. You're in and you're out. Yeah. Lots of security in the parking lots, yeah. driving around. Uh, the Coliseum did not have a great reputation here in Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, but you felt... you. you it wasn't as dangerous as those places, no. No. right? Like There's this no. was just you were more worried about if you'd have enough change for giving people that were playing like plastic drums and things like that. Yeah, that was the worst actually. When going home out of that, like if you went LRT, God, that was bad. Yeah, because it would just take three hours to finally get on yeah, one of those exactly. things. Yeah. But um, but there was no gangs and no. stuff around there. It was just no. just. Gross. I mean, just old yeah. and dingy, but not violent. And I mean, the homeless weren't uh, weren't really there. The homeless yeah. were they weren't still stabbing downtown. people back then. No, <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. well, now, yeah. yeah, yeah. It and it was in a, it was a weird spot because, like, to the southeast is Highlands, Montrose, that area, so uh, residential, yeah, mm-hmm. and then to the southwest is 118th Ave, which is uh, at times right. I know they've tried to clean it up, and then. Northwest was industrial, and then northeast was yeah. Wayne Gretzky Drive. So it was kind of in this weird, weird kind corner. Of spot. Like, and I always said to people when I started traveling with with Oilers TV, you get to see the different locations of the arenas and stuff. I'm like, where do you go to get a coffee around Rexall Place, the Fireside Grill? Well, it's not open at ten in the morning. Yeah. Right? You know, now there's oddly enough, like you said, the Tim, Tim Hortons, Hortons right across the street. Well, Fireside's not even open anymore. Oh, it's no. gone. No, it's, no, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah, uh, the have... closest would have been down the road. Uh, there was the Starbucks inside the Safeway, but that's way mm-hmm. down 118th yeah. and 82nd yeah. Street. So and it's not like right there. What was the name of that country bar on the corner? Just you'd go and white. 
Oh, and the Tommy left. G will know this. He knows everybody. What like was oh, underneath on the, the west of the LRT station. Yeah. Wasn't that a zoo car? That's what it was, I think. It, it was, was anywhere it like was a Latin, Latin bar or something. Latin bar. Oh, I do. They like got dance down. place and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. a zoo car. Maybe was it was country yeah. before. It was country before that. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that's where it, you got to get Cam Moon in the here to talk about when Moon would know. when Pass him and Passy Passy got. The Steve Passmore, he got uh, he had some issues with cramping, and got called up, but he met Mooner there every night for oh to the point where Mooner was like, "You got to get sent back down. You're killing my liver here." <laughs> 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 but Mooner tells the story way better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that it, Country Bar Coliseum Steak and Pizza. That's a great yeah. spot. I mean, uh, Tony's on 111. Edify Magazine. Uh, they have their annual restaurant issue out. Coliseum Steak and Pizza is number three in terms of yeah. tried and true. Right out. Yeah, like, it's I just, great. It was exactly. great. Support was yeah. one of camera members too, but Coliseum Steak and Pizza. They got the big steak three. cut fries though. I'm not a big steak cut fries mm-hmm. guy. Yeah, that's, that doesn't that do was, it for me. But the big beef ribs there. <laughs> Coliseum. The pizza there. Pizza at Coliseum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good it's, spot. It, uh, it knocks it out of the park. Mm-hmm. When I lived at the Forum until Christmas the one year, yeah. I was... That's uh, where they put you up? Was that the Forum? Yeah. Till Christmas, still in the basement. Oh you were, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, yeah. I knew what you were doing. Then. No, well, I I knew them all by their real name. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Coliseum did not have a good reputation. It had the history. Uh, to the crew, the credit to the crew at Northlands in the city, uh, they did everything they could to make sure that place was clean and tidy and stuff, and and lasted as long as it did. But yeah. it did not have a great reputation. Mm-hmm. Although, Joe Lewis. Nassau Coliseum. Um, where else was really bad? There was a few spots where you saddled them. Saddled them. No, no, it was. That's it was just good. a it bad okay. facility. That's yeah. just a bad facility. It's in an okay spot. Yeah. Uh, well, Prudential Center was before bad. in L.A. Before in L.A. Like yeah. yeah. Even Staples Center. Once you get outside of, or pardon me, Crypto.com Arena. Once you get outside of uh, L.A. Live, it can get really Sketchy. scary Ooh. pretty quickly. Uh, United Center is not in a great spot. No, the old Chicago Stadium was it in a better? It was literally right next, next to where United Center. Oh, yeah. was it was it yeah. side by side? It is a much? parking lot oh, okay. now. Hmm. Um, there are still a few arenas where you're like, mm, this is not great. I'm just trying to think like where, but it's it's gone better. I just remember Nassau Coliseum sucked, and apparently, <laughs> like if you went a few blocks one way, it was like one of the most dangerous <laughs> areas in, in the That's east. Funny. So I was like, Oof. okay. What do you do? Yeah. That's going to almost wrap it up for the Hangout for today. Uh, reminder, Lock Shop coming up uh, 11 o'clock right here in Edmonton Sports Talk with Dusty and Huss. They'll get you set for the night uh, in sports. And then at noon, two guys in a goalie, Gager, Cass, Dusty. Uh, both shows, keywords for the EST flyaway. Um, but the big news of today, uh, April 9th. Yes. The Ranch Golf and Country Club. It's going to be open. You can go golfing Let's at go. the ranch. If you want your tee spot, you want to get a spot on noon tomorrow, the ranch golf.com. I always ranchgolf.com, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ranchgolf.com noon tomorrow. And as Murray said in the years past, that goes snap yeah. of a finger. Yeah. So you could try calling too. Your chances of getting through are going to be a lot tougher than if you just go online yeah. and book a tea time. Yeah, for sure. Great show today. So let's go to Long Riders by the old Coliseum. <laughs> long, a couple long of texters. Yeah, oh, it's Long, long Riders. Long riders. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I never went in there. I was. Uh, I didn't fit. <laughs> you were, the, you were, you were a good too boy. bougie. No, no, You're I good... didn't fit the clientele. Was, oh, okay. Uh, well, then yeah. maybe you would have fit the one they went to after. I, I, I wasn't I'm into sure line dancing. I can't buy into that. He did go to his. Yeah, I think you could fit in anywhere. Well, usually, I, 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 I did well at Esmeralda's. But we want yeah, to bring it back. Did. We uh, made yes. a plan yesterday that once we do uh, Shanks and once we get uh, that off the ground and things are going well, yeah. then we're going to bring back Ezzy's. Shanks and EST experience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Ezzy's and EST experience. Yeah. And it's going to be great. Right. It's going to be wonderful. And it's going to sink All us you got to do is say the word on uh, the Shanks deal, and I'm <laughs> all over it. I am, we're going to make that freaking happen. The second you say go, I love it. I'm jumping on board, and we're going to push that through real fast. VIP Golf Show returning to Edmonton Sports Talk April 28th. You can start golfing at the ranch April 9th. 
Spring's here, boys. Let's Spring go. is here. Coming up next, like I said, it is the Lock Shop on behalf of Tom, Murray, Joaquin. I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in to the EST Hangout on this Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the Lock Shop starting in just a couple minutes. Look at this. Let's go. Let's go. There you go. Right in front of the camera. First time guest, long time listener, fan of the original draft commissioner. Welcome to the EST Hangout presented by White Claw Hard Seltzer. The difference is clear. Matt Awanek, Tom Zola here. Joining us today, 